what's going on everybody welcome back to the kcm just made my way back from korea in the round of four of ssl really looking forward to some great games here today as we hop into week number seven let's bring up that lineup speed light royal best stork bisu action queen jadong and shouldn't after going and watching the asl and now I'm really getting the sensation, the feeling that in KCM we get way more consistently good games out of this tournament. Yeah. No, I, I feel, I've, I've always said that, haven't I, to you behind closed doors at least. Maybe, I can't remember if I've ever said that on air or not, but I yeah, I've always felt like KCM does bring a higher consistency of bang for your buck, if you will. I don't know what, what that is exactly, what kind of formula. I don't know if that's like a, a pressure thing where the psychological aspect of the game is making players crumble and they can't execute their plans or what have you, or they vastly underestimate how much planning they actually need to make and whatnot. I don't know what is going on there, but it does seem to be the case. Yeah, it could be uh, the the pressures of playing one versus one, and especially on stage. Uh, it could also be uh, the hive mind aspect of KCM, where you know you've got two other players who are helping you to you know make a decision about what kind of build you want to go for uh, against a specific player. And look at this! What is what is this? Barracks doing down below the the minerals in the natural. Yeah, we Royal. saw we saw something similar to this, didn't we? Um, in a Terran versus Terran match uh, uh, recently in, in the SSL, seems like Terrans have been a little bit more sneaky as of late. With uh, especially on this map, it seems like ter they've been liking hiding the barracks behind this mineral patch for some reason. I, I guess as a small early uh, m mind game, uh, maybe it's just safer to do it that way rather than putting it out on the map further i don't know i was expecting a gas to follow this up uh, without the wall it becomes pretty dangerous yeah. uh, but he's actually gonna go one rex fast expand maybe he's hiding this so that if queen scouts him he's gonna kind of freak out and wonder where the the barracks are at maybe he's gonna think it's a uh, BBS in the middle of the map or something? What the heck? Okay, a bunker going to be placed at another kind of awkward location. This yeah. is not really covering the barracks, and yeah, it's it's pretty far back uh, compared to a regular bunk bunker, don't you think? Right. Yeah, he's going to have to uh, SCV block the ramp, or these links might actually do a little bit of a run around. They won't actually necessarily kill the bunker, obviously, but yeah, they could maybe get behind the minerals and up the ramp if he doesn't block perfectly. So a little bit of an awkward moment. Might have to lift the barracks as well. So only two marines in the bunker, but I think it, the two marines in the bunker seems like it might be enough to ward Queen away, although he might want to try and snipe this SCV building the CC if he can. It's going to rotate around, try to run up into the main base, it looks like. Three more links rotating as well, and he's really getting ready to do this run by. Yeah. Uh, SCVs may be targeted. The blocking looks good so far. Oh, and he's going to land the barracks as well. Okay, that, that really shuts things down. No point trying to run by now, so Queen will back away. So Queen opted for a pretty early pool. Did you see if it was over pool or nine pool? I didn't see the exact timing of that, no. So I'm going to assume that it was an over pool. Nine pool is pretty uh, committed, and not a lot of Zerg players are doing that recently. Uh, we did see the hatchery go down at a pretty reasonable time, so I don't think it was... Uh, you know, a gas before hatchery either. And right. so this is most likely going to transition into a pretty normal game with Queen in a slight disadvantage. Royal has the lead with that one racks FE, even though he had to build the bunker. He's going to be feeling good in this position. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how far ahead he would be, but it does seem like he's going to have a little bit of an edge uh, getting away with uh, the early build and the six links basically doing nothing here, not even sniping the building SCV. So, yeah, not really ideal situation for Queen, to say the least. But he's got a healthy enough economy. That he, certainly, if this was in the hands of Sulky, we wouldn't be counting him in much of a disadvantage at all. But I guess he hasn't got the same kind of finesse and consistency as someone like Sulky, so we get a little bit nervous for players like Queen when they start to get behind against turns 
Royal is a scary one as well. He's going to be moving out just slightly with those Marines. I'm not sure what the plan was there. It feels like he wanted to force out a few more links, but he didn't move very far. A lot of times you'll see the Terran player reveal the move out to the Overlord that's just over top of his uh, cliff. Start to move out and then rotate around and, you know, come back to the natural on a path that's not in vision of the overlords. And in that way, you can really scare the Zerg player into making a bunch of lings. But uh, now he's going to move out with the medics just at a slightly later time. Uh, this is a big threat of a sunken bus. Yeah. We've only got one sunken being built. This is he's, rough. Yeah, he's holding back his larva. He's going to start a bunch of mutas, but they're not going to be ready in time. He starts a second sunken. Did he start one or no? He sends it back. Uh oh, this could be bad. Queen might just die. Yeah, he's got some uh, units on the way, obviously, but they're not here right this second to help him, so a tiny window of vulnerability may be exploited. He's trying to see if he can get on the periphery and just snipe the sunken down, but the Ling's getting a good surround. He does manage to clear those up, and now the sunken will fall as well. With the two bats coming in, even though the muters will eventually clean this up, enough drones may die that it might just be GG here. He does manage to get both of the snipes on the fire bats, though, chasing after the train of drones. Puts a lot of damage onto one muter disc as well. Finally gets the catch on that. Only four muters now in this stack. Needs to get another we move to our so we can start one-shotting these marines so for the time being these marines will start to rain down fire upon this hatchery and that might get the drone train again and one drone already going down yet again another drone gonna die beautiful drill maybe to help clean this up but honestly this is way too much damage for queen to sustain now so many mirrors going down even though the marines are gonna fall yeah, that was very well done with the, the drone pull. Uh, unfortunate that Royal moved into that position because he could have straight up won that game if he stands on top of the eggs and just doesn't let you know more mutas pop without being punished and uh, prevent the, the drones from getting back to the mineral patches. It, it, it's spiraling out of control already, but it would have been even worse uh, had we not got that pretty nice drill forcing some of the marines to even hop over top of the mineral patches during that but uh, as things settle down royal is just going to sit behind his turrets confident in his lead and go directly into science vessel and it's the perfect uh, option to go for now you know that your opponent wants to do damage oh look at that evolution chamber mm, queen gonna be going for kind of a crazy zerg approach yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But uh, but what about this third base? I mean, it's not going to be easy to secure and maintain for Queen. So getting enough gas online to support those ultralisks might be very tricky in this map, I think. So I don't know. Like, I'm still a little bit worried for him. The supplies kind of give you the impression that he's in a much better position than he maybe is in. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to pan out. I have a little bit of a nerves for Queen going forward, though, because I just don't see how he's going to keep hold of the, the extra gas to support these ultralisks later on. That third base is always a problem on this map. And where is he going to even try to take it? It seems like top right. Yeah. He'll be snagged, but... Yeah, this is this is one of the hardest bit maps to hold that third base. There's two different entrances to that. And Royal has all the tools necessary to break uh, any base out on the map. As soon as he finds out about it, and realizes that Queen's making this transition, he's going to immediately put the pressure back on. He's only sitting back at home because he's uh, waiting for the potential big counterattack from Queen after taking all that damage to try and just win the game outright. Yeah. Seems like Queen is trying to bait um, Royal around a little bit to see if he can get some damage down into the main. Like he's, he's picking away at this depot and forcing Royal to come and save it so he can swing back into the Terran production line, take out a few turrets and maybe get on top of the racks a little bit. And uh, maybe if he can get some good uh, micro trades with those... Um, uh, skirmishes, he would eventually whittle down that force enough to be in a much more, you know, manageable position in the mid game going forward. But it seems like Royals noticed that and, you know, stopped uh, deal, um, falling into that trap over and over again. So finally just calling his bluff and not taking too much damage there. But for a moment, I thought Queen was going to get in to the main base a bit more and open up the position. Luckily, Royal wasn't too foolish about that. Those science vessels are on the way now. Double upgrades as well. Royal gonna react to the mutas flying in, but he's seen the base up in top right. 
And he's even gonna save this turret. Wow, great repair there from Royal, keeping that alive. So frustrating as a Zerg player when you're just you're looking for anything, any sort of damage, and the Terran is just responding in such a perfect manner, uh, repairing a turret like that. You can't even open up that one position that you were looking for. Yeah, I mean it does pu push you to your limits as a Zerg to like f try and create opportunities when there's none to be had naturally. So it kind of forces you to really like think creatively to open up the Terran's position or try and uh, force him out of position so then you know do a bit of a tempo swing somehow some way but seems like Queen is still just going to try and deal with a battering ram action on this northern flank in the main base see if he can get down the kill on this academy does still look like he's going to get the academy at the very least and up more pressure on the radiate does come down it's taking him a long time to split up that radiate muter that's a long long time indeed so much damage done onto the rest of that stack and it's all bruised up and softened so now Royal's going to feel extremely confident marching across the center of the board right now just threatening a sunken bus there's no lurkers i don't think to hold this this could be just it lights out for queen it looked like queen was continuing to build mutas in the hopes that he could uh, put together a ling muta defense but look at how soft these mutas are after all that damage from the irradiates i don't think that he can stop this force breaking in through his natural or going up to the top right you know, this could actually uh, leave an opportunity for Queen. If Royal tries to break into the natural uh, with the three sunkins there and loses his entire force, then Queen's right back in this. But I don't think that Royal will be foolish enough to take that fight. He's sending another group up towards top right. Uh, that group may be getting sandwiched by a bunch of lings. Let's see if he can get the kill on this. This is a pretty good engagement for Queen and diving in with the mutas as well. He will clean up the majority of this. However, I don't think he has what it takes to hold off the next wave, which is coming down uh, or coming up from the south. And plus we have yeah. these vessels. Oh man, just it's so tough right now for Queen. I mean, and yeah, these, these the two vessels have a radiate in just a second here as well. There's another two ves uh, two radiates available to Royal here, as well as a, such a strong stack of Marine infantry force. There's the first to radiate, uh, devastating the remainder of that mutilist flock. There's only like three left now, so they can't really do anything. Queen's going to lose this base, more or less guaranteed. And that's what you we were talking about earlier. How is he going to hold on to these this third gas to support these ultralisks? He's got his ultralisks out 12 minutes, but now he's not got no third gases. Is that what we were talking about, saying GG. There it is. Royal takes down Queen to start things off. An interesting opener from Royal. And it seemed like Queen was expecting some sort of eight racks going for that overpool and building so many lings. How many did he build? Eight? That's a pretty heavy commitment uh, in the early game. And it really didn't pay off for him. The well, I thought he was at least going to kill the building SCV on the CC when it was like dipping um, to like the bottom left or bottom right on the build right. cycle, but did even try and go for that for the compensation. I was a little bit surprised. Yeah, things really spiraled out of control from that point on. And now we're going to be jumping into a TVP, guys. Game number two, it's coming right up. Okay, game number two, Royal versus Best on Deja Vu. You got Best down here in the bottom right, Royal in the top left. Cross map, we're going to see Nexus first. I mean, you could see anything on this map, it's hard to say, saying, you know, like we could see some craziness or some very greedy play. The world is your oyster on this map in terms of the range of builds that you have access to, although that equally you have to consider the range of play that will be available to your opponent as well. They might be doing some very cheesy shenanigans in the early games, like a proxy factory floated into your main base and what have you. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet uh, on Deja Vu, but um, I guess it makes sense. There's a lot of space to the north of Bess. Monty Hall. Oh, this is Monty Hall. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I apologize. I was trying to uh, figure out which map this was just by looking at the uh, mini map, but... To be, to be fair, I didn't even correct you and say what the name was. I just, just started <laughs> describing Monty Hall. So, yeah, also my fault for not correcting you on the name right away. All right, so Monty Hall, that completely changes everything. Uh, Royal going to go ahead with a pretty quick gas. Uh, gas on 11. He's going to have a very fast factory, but definitely can start to float that out. 
and try to figure out where Bess is taking this Nexus first. Right. And he might be able to punish this. Yeah, I imagine he can potentially punish this. Um, I don't know if he will uh, commit to that or not, but what I'm curious about is if he'll do some kind of like forward factory because we sometimes see these turn players like to hop over their SCVs into one of these lanes, sometimes the top lane, and uh, just get a quick factory going, see if they can squeeze that in by uh, drilling it over the mineral line. And uh, against the 12 Nexus, there might be a chance that he can maybe get some counter to do to this 12 Nexus and get some damage done to Best here, especially if Best is feeling a little bit more safe than usual with the semi-island setup. Trying to hop over with the probe. He's going to be able to get this. Needs more money. <laughs> Doesn't have enough right now to, yeah. to build this again. So he's going to back off for now. Both Terran and Protoss can do this little trick, guys. The uh, Where you build a building and then try to hop over the mineral patch. Uh, usually it'll be with a supply depot for the Terran. You just keep resetting the... The, uh, <laughs> the SCV, he's, he's really trying here. Hopefully the SCV will float to the south, and then he'll be able to cancel and get off of it. Place your bets, guys. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like the roulette wheel at the casino, right? Like You never know quite where it's going to go. Maybe oh, it'll oh, eventually... Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, he gets oh. oh, no! Oh. Oh. oh, he gets in. I think he stopped spam clicking for a second, and it almost went back, but... Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Royal gets in finally. He's going to see the, the Nexus first in a moment. Oh, he was thinking about building something in here, I think. <laughs> he saw yeah. the, the opening and he went back. But the Zealot... Oh my gosh, really? Royal didn't scout the base? He that's lost rough, it to man. a Zealot. Oh, that's man. That's rough. That yeah, is, that's rough. I'm not going to lie. That is really, really rough. Here we go. Vulture over the wall. A uh, dragon could do a lot of damage. Soon. Yeah, it could do yeah, but, a lot of damage, but yeah, this is this we'll is, have to see about it. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. delayed. Uh, I mean, it, it oh. might get two or three probes here, just barely. Might just barely get two or three here. Starport in the middle of the map. Yeah, he really needs to get some damage because Best has been pumping away probes at this natural. He's gonna jump on top with the probes. Can he get one more? Oh. Just two. That's that's yeah. a bit sad for Royal. It's a little sad. It's a lower end on the stick for the range of uh, potential value there. But uh, it is what it is, you know. It's something. It's a little bit of compensation, although sometimes you would rather have that vulture left alive in a more traditional setup with us without these lanes because you'd want to have that for mines to lay down expansions or whatever. But it has a little bit less value in this setup with the lanes as they are. Um, so maybe not quite as bad of a decision just to commit the vulture, try and get as many probe kills as possible and give himself a nice little economic lead early on. Well, I like what Best is doing uh, now that he's seen the vulture opener. He knows that he's going to be ahead, far ahead economically, in fact, and he's just going to go three gateway observatory, three gate goons, kills pretty much anything, and the drop is no exception. As long as he's got dragons spread all over inside of his base, he shouldn't take too much damage from this, and he could even go into a third base pretty quickly, uh, whereas Royal is struggling to, uh, you know, get his economy rolling. And he's committing a lot of resources into getting this uh, quick drop. He's not going to have a lot of tanks uh, for a follow-up push, which means that Best will be very safe to just mass expand and get really far ahead. Yeah, yeah. There's a big gamble going for this dropship play. Who knows? Mate, the Best's Dragoons are a little bit out of position right now. And there's, there's only one, I think, in the main base that will be popping out soon. So maybe he could do a lot of damage here, especially if he can lay down some much. Okay, here come the two Dragoons from the get other side. So might get a lot of damage. Oh, oh beautiful block there with the pylon finishing the wall. Nice Sim City setup here from Best, maximizing the Sim City to the best of his content and also getting the probe shuffled over to the bottom side. So he's not taking too many losses is either really well done like every intention there from best was really spot on like i feel like his sim city was almost designed that way so that if he needed to he could plug those gaps really well done from him in the end he loses maybe four probes five probes uh, some of those probes out mining uh, minerals that are not part of the regular mineral patches these walls uh, were pretty vulnerable 
Uh, so he was yeah. able to pick off more than maybe he would have otherwise if everything was, you know, sitting back uh, in a good defensive position. Uh, next to the Nexus, he probably wouldn't have been able to get as much damage as he did. Now he can drop behind this Sim City. That would be amazing. Um, because the, it's the a dragons, risky, though. yeah, the dragons might not be able to get back there. But yeah, the drop would probably die, and then he wouldn't have that utility uh, to keep Vest yeah. in check. So he's going to keep that alive for now. Well, um, it's it's almost the threat of it is better than the execution of it, right? Sure. Like, because then Best can't move out and put pressure onto Royal. Whereas if he commits with the dropship and loses it, then Best knows he's like, you know, got like <laughs> smooth sailing all the way to your base, and then all of a sudden your one tank is looking pretty flimsy. That's right. And so, some dragoons are going to make their way up to the front, just checking. They're going to see the one tank drop loads up once again. Two tanks are now available, so a little bit more robust with that. Plus the wall and the bunk bunker, he's probably not going to die. Is it time to dive in with this? He is going to jump in, start to throw down these vultures. Three kills so far, a fourth. And possibly a fifth. Not bad at all. Now it's getting kind of crazy. Six, six yeah. seven. This is looking very good. And he'll get out with these two vultures, which is amazing. Uh, really impressive. Pick those back up again and maybe land them on the island or just drop them somewhere to keep the tabs on where these bases might be coming up for best. Yeah, that wasn't necessarily like sharp levels of vulture control, but that was certainly like sharp levels of vulture damage, like really high level of probe kills achieved there in the mid game, early mid game state. It's really impressive. We will now make him much more content to just sit back and power a little bit, even though the best got away with this 12 Nexus early game without too much punishment being dealt to him. So, yeah, I would say Royal's now finally got that compensation that he was looking for. Scans and sees the Reva tech as well, so not going to be going ahead in the dark in any sense of the word. Going to be going up to four factories, five factories even, giving himself a lot of uh, mid-range uh, um, uh, versatility against the, the Reaver tech. Uh, you want to have as many units as possible, so you can just basically steamroll the Reaver player and not just let them tactically snipe your tanks as they try and siege across the map. He opened with a starport. Did he make a wraith? It can be a great counter. I don't think so. It can be, yes, but I don't think he did in this case. He does sometimes, though. Yeah, it seems like he's he hasn't built that. Um, bit of a missed opportunity there. Sometimes if the Protoss player loses the Dragoon, that the, they, they kind of have to bring a Dragoon if you build a Wraith. Um, yeah, yeah. And he might even have a Dragoon inside this shuttle right now. But if he loses a Dragoon, then sometimes the Wraith can just chase and gun down uh, that shuttle. And then you lose the shuttle and the Reaver and everything. So... A uh, bit of a missed opportunity. Best is not going to dive in, though. He sees the turrets, he sees the defensive setup, and he just goes ahead and heads back home. He's going to pick up double Reaver, I think, and maybe bring it to bear at the front. Are we going to see no. a patented best bust? Yes, we will. We Of course we will, Say, I mean, who we'll be talking about here. It doesn't matter how formidable your defenses may look. <laughs> best will just take one look at it and just be like, you know, King Kong smash. And that's just how, that's just how it is. Like, you know, it, it, somehow he makes it work and fair play to him. If it works, it works. Oh, he's going to catch the dropship! Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well, uh, he didn't have vision of that... Um, uh, control tower if you guys didn't know when you uh, lift off your building and leave the right. the add-on the add-on does not continue to grant vision it's, it's, yeah it, it becomes, a it becomes neutral, neutral yeah 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 so he had no idea that, that was even happening so he kind of like just ran in there and like, unfortunately like yeah just got absolutely decimated but uh, it has a lot of tanks though does royal and look at the supplies now there might be enough meat to his army that he can kind of shove best back a little bit here make him you know kind of a little bit hesitant to come in here but like we see best utilizing these reavers to be a bit tactical here and just snipe a few of these tanks and at the very least forces many sieges as possible uh, some scans coming from royal to try and clean out the uh, observers and maybe get a tactical snipe on this shuttle so far good control from best though best is going to rotate around and may actually stop this uh, third cc from building which is very annoying royal was hoping to uh, expand and grow into a third uh, while doing this push but now he can't really do that uh, he's also going to be taking some damage on this supply depot, so he'll have to bring some of his rallies back. Oh, the Reaver goes down. Vess was not paying attention. 
Uh, trying to get these Dragoons to fi go in and, and fight, and he's putting together some Templar and Storms to try and break this push, so losing some of the uh, utility of those uh, Reavers might be painful, but the Siege Up is quite late. All the Zealots get on top of a lot of these tanks. The drops... Oh, God, the Storm as well is insane. So much damage. Holy wow. I've not seen that many Terran units die that quickly in a long time. What the what did we just watch, guys? That, that feel, I feel like like someone's gonna start on OnlyFans if that is like some of like the you know paywall content. What is going on? <laughs> well King Kong decided to smash. It was a little bit later than we expected. It wasn't an attack, it was a defense, but it was a defensive smash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a bit of a calculated smash, right? Like, he didn't just run in and smash. He kind of, like, ran away and made it... He did, he did, like, a false charge. You know, like, the gorillas in the jungle? Like, they false charge you, right? They don't actually charge you for real. They kind of test you to see if, like, you'll actually flinch and, like, be shit scared, right? So if you hold your ground against the false charge, the, the gorilla might actually be, like, a little bit wary of you and back up a little bit more. Whereas, uh, yeah, we kind of saw that from Best, just a nice little false charge. Uh, Royal held his own, so, you know, Best retreated to the jungle a little bit. Royal got a little bit too cocky, though, he stepped into his territory and got ripped apart. Yeah, the, the late siege was very painful. Royal lost so many tanks. He has to take a third base now. There's no other choice. You can't put together another army like that uh, uh, this quickly. And no. these bases mine out kind of fast. I don't, I, I don't think we ever checked that, did we, Shun, how many minerals are at each of these patches, but uh, it's got to uh, be you less. Mean the expansions? Yeah, yeah, these expansions. Is uh, it 1,500? I, I, I think it's normal. I think it's normal. But look, it's well, already, they it's already it. mined out. It's 13 minutes in and the naturals mined out. I don't know. Wait, wait, which which natural? Uh, you mean best Royals, natural? Royal's natural. Oh, Royal's natural. Yeah, the, uh, the main's not yeah, lined out, but it the must natural's be... gone. But I don't think the original was like that. Maybe they remade it and changed the mineral values. I don't know about that. They maybe maybe they've changed it. I don't think it was always like that, if that's the case. Yeah, it definitely have, must have made it like a thousand or something, right? I wonder. Well, big bust coming from best. Ooh. I expect nothing less. There should be a great storm here on all these vultures, and the tank is going to end up getting taken out as well. Zealot's getting right up on top of this. I don't think he can push uh, past the CC, but he might be able to uh, force the CC to cancel. That's a lot of tanks on the other side of these mineral patches, which will be very hard to push through. The DT getting in, dealing some damage as well. Picks off two tanks because the science vessel didn't fly forward. There we go. The command center will fall, and I don't think it was canceled either. I think he just lost no. all the money from that, and Royal is falling back into his own main base. He's gonna take a huge mine. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's gonna be the GG trigger. Can't say I blame him. Wow, absolute monstrous performance from Best. He still somehow acts like a beast no matter what the environment is. Even if you take him out of the jungle, he still seems to be in his element. Absolute mad lad. Much respect to him. With Royal being eliminated. We've got Jadong coming out. True Brood War royalty here. Spawning in the top left-hand corner on Dominator. Best over in the center right. This guy, absolute king of Brood War. Yeah. Uh, Jadong doesn't really need an introduction. I think, like, pretty much everyone knows who he is. Like, uh, he's kind of like the Zerg Flash in terms of his popularity. It's kind of hard not to know who Jadong is, even as someone that maybe only knows StarCraft from a more curse, cursory view and doesn't actually play the game, you know what I mean? Like you, you're probably going to hear of him hear of him in some way, shape, or form. The Tyrant himself has so many titles under his belt, such a legacy behind him. Um, isn't quite playing at the same level of his former glory, but has been stepping up a little bit in recent times. Maybe he can have a little bit of a shine back to former glory here, like some of these other guys are. It remains to be seen. Yeah, I thought he was going to do a little bit better uh, overall this year, but uh, he's still on the come up. He's still improving. Uh, takes yeah. so much dedication and time to 
Uh, unless you're Rain, of course, but to get to that level, you do need a huge amount of dedication, time, and effort. And you know, Jadong's getting on a little bit. He's got other things to do. He's got other uh, pursuits. Nexus first from best. Wow. Just just saw that. We got you know, Jadon going for a 12 hatch. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but man, can the Protoss pump out a lot of units uh, off of a Nexus first. It, gets, it, it really messes with the math. Uh, that you have, the right. calculation that you have in this game. These are the kind of games that would give you an energetic buzz back in the day. Like, say it was like Jadon versus Stork or something, and Jadon goes for Hatchery first, and Stork goes for Nexus first. Yeah, like, people are going crazy at that. Like, interesting things will be had, nonetheless, no matter what happens in this game. Uh, I think, like, Bess is going to get the better end of the stick, though. That, unless there's, like, double hatches before pool, there's no real way of punishing this or gaining an economic edge over it. You'll kind of just have to suck it up unless you were already hard countering him anyway of an early pool. Yeah, absolutely. The usual counter would be to run by. <laughs> you have to run by with links, but look at this. He's not even building a cannon. Best gets in. He scouts him first. He sees that he's got the late pool. And he's going to start the cannon after gateway and gas. Oh my god. This is crazy. He's going to have a, an enormous advantage and a, uh, yeah. an insanely fast course this there. Is, this is almost too much. Like an amateur player would struggle to optimize this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. This is almost like too good. Like An, an amateur player would but would actually probably like make a, a fumble of this and would rather just like make the cannon and be safe and like keep his build tight and mid-range. Whereas like Best is like such a knowledgeable guy that he's probably going to get so much juice out of this orange saying it's insane. Yeah, he's going to have the fastest Corsair possible with a ton of gateways, a lot of zealots. Uh, the, the timings are all going to be pushed up by like a full 30 seconds in terms of when he can push with certain numbers of units. Uh, it, it's going to be rough. Jadong, he'll have to have more defenses and that means he's going to have less drones. Uh, Best has an enormous tempo advantage and I know it doesn't look like a lot right now, but it is no. uh, overwhelming as a Zerg player when you're trying to deal with something like this. Yeah, there, there's some things in StarCraft which are more obvious where like the, your eyes can just see on the screen what's happening and make sense of it. There's a lot of things which are much more subtle and nuanced, and these this is one of those things where on paper it might not look like much to you guys, but right now like best is like best like range of play is so huge and powerful. Like all of his timings have become not only earlier but stronger. And like usually as a Zerg, you're already like kind of fighting from behind a little bit against the Nexus first, but when they've got mint like optimized builds as well as the Nexus first, it's kind of operating on the level of insanity. Yeah, so we're going to see that first Corsair come out. Jadong just started his Spire, so he's he's likely going to lose two Overlords uh, just for a start, right? If these are found out, he's going to try and hide them. But uh, assuming that Best can find some of these Overlords, uh, he's going to deal a lot of damage. And Jadong, I mean, he's going to grab his fourth hatch, his fifth hatch. He's going to get those Scourge out and prepare for a normal game. And I know you talk about this a lot, Shun, he's just going to have to play from behind. Sometimes you have to swallow yeah. this as a Zerg player. You have to. As a Zerg player, that's that, especially in this matchup, that's, that's pretty much the go-to response is if you're behind and there's no obvious counter, you play you play as you usually would. That's just how you do it. You play you play how you would usually play and you just suck up that it's from behind. Going to be getting a full scout off with that Corsair as well. Has done a pretty good job of like tucking some of these overlords into like awkward, hard-to-reach places. So maybe you're not going to be acquiring too many of those kills. Might be able to get the intercept trajectory on at least one of these here and maybe get this kill at least. Yeah, he's going to get this one for sure, but the Spire is now done, and he will likely only get one. Just, yeah. the, just the one kill, which is amazing for Jadong. 
um, considering how he made extra just in case anyway but it's good yeah. that he doesn't have to replace that anyway you know it's just one little thing he doesn't have to worry about it's another hundred minerals in the bank so to speak uh, beautiful surround on these zealots uh, um, actually took a little bit while from best to deny some surface area finally going to be getting some better trades by tucking uh, his zealots closer together and uh, microing them back a little bit Jaehyung still pressing the issue and trying to get as many um, forced in interactions as possible all the zealots are on like red HP super low beautiful uh, HP management here from best Jaehyung really overestimating his own ability there but might be able to drill the and kill all three of these zealots really quickly with good stacking of the drones you have to align the drones manually before you shoot to make sure they all fire but Jaehyung did a pretty good job of that didn't really lose too many drones there fortunately just one drone ends up going down a little bit of lost mining time uh, but this all hurts it all slows you down yeah. just a little bit more everything that goes wrong uh, in this game is adding to the lead that Bess has already accumulated he's making a bunch of right. uh, cannons back at home so that he can't die to these hydras he's going to come across the map with four corsairs these overlords are going to start to die very quickly and Jadong not reacting, doesn't even get any damage on these Corsairs, so they're going to keep moving through and killing off more Overlords. This can spiral uh, very yeah. quickly. This, this is looking... Oh, he's got some... Okay, if he catches like... Oh, catches one of those Corsairs. So close to getting two kills there. Would be insane if he got two Corsairs there. Does manage to catch one, which is already a big deal. If Jadong can keep the Corsair in a low enough count, uh, Best hasn't really got a lot of... Oh! I can't Another believe that. One. Wow. I can't believe that she went down there. What did we just watch? I'm sure that's a bit of a mistake there from Bess. He just did not assume that um, Jadon would stay um, on trajectory with the cannon being there. But yeah, Jadon is just absolute like cold, cold, cold face killer right now, and um, might be able to put some pressure on with these hydras. There is a beautiful cannon wall in a diagonal line, but it doesn't really matter with the good target for him. You need to pick off the the two really quickly, and now the third cannon for already falling with the fourth starting to take a lot of damage. Oh Two God. high templars here, but it's not enough to hold it on. And Jadon finally flips the script on Best and says, Get the hell out of my game. I'm the tyrant. Unbelievable. Look at the timing on that storm. He had storm at eight minutes. You generally expect a storm to be storm timing to be finishing up yeah. at nine he had, minutes. He had he had, a he had the four early. He he had the four cannons and two storms at eight minutes, which is the bare minimal defense that you need to to break a hydro bust at that time. He had the tools necessary, but Jano execution was so flawless there. Absolutely flawless, and I I saw that Best sent out three zealots right before that attack came in as well. Uh, he was too confident in the fact that he was going to be able to hold that with the two storms uh, and four cannons. Uh, having the zealots in the mix to just kind of block the hydras from running forward and add that DPS would have made uh, quite a bit of a difference. And unfortunately, he didn't keep those around. Best maybe getting overconfident. I don't know. Ah, no. uh, he had such a huge advantage, but. It's insane to watch Jadong flip the script on him. Really, really good play. I gotta say, Shun, Jadong really surprising me. And uh, in a very good way, that last game. Uh, able to take down best. His next opponent will be Speed. Spawning in the top right-hand corner. This should be an amazing matchup. Speed has been so fun to watch recently because he's really upped yeah. his game and has uh, shown us next level aggressive style out of Terran. Right. Well, he, he, I mean, he's been one of the more up-and-coming Terrans we've had for a while now. We've had players like Sharp, like Speed, that are really modern, new up-and-coming Terrans, and they seem to be so dedicated to the game, and they've been rising rapidly in both their skill level and potential in their play. So, always fascinating to see how these players are going to be stacking up. You never know quite what will happen. Suddenly, we might see, you know, in like two years' time, Speed might be winning SSLs. You never know what's going to happen uh, in StarCraft, especially with um, how dedicated some of these guys are to this game if one or two of the other guys start dropping down a little bit or not quite pulling their own they might be very talented but if you don't put in the hard work and the other guy's putting in more hours than you and is more passionate and about reaching that goal and yeah you're probably going to get squashed eventually for sure and speed seems to have that longevity or that uh dedication that's necessary yeah. to reach the pinnacle of starcraft play and He's going to be opening with a wall on kickback. Uh, will this be for... <laughs> for <pool. laughs> will, this, will this be for a uh, 
double starport play because we know that speed's very good at that type yes, of style. Yes, 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 and yes, he will probably go for that, and uh, he he should go for that because this is one of the best maps to go for Rafes on, I would say, um, for sure. And I I think it'd be amazing. If, if, uh, he's also, I think, one of the better Rafe users, if I'm not mistaken. Like once upon a time, that didn't used to be the case, but he is pretty adept in his um, Rafe control. Like certainly, like players like Light once upon a time were considered the best uh, in their Wraith control usage. But I think in modern times, there's a few players like Speed that have a little bit of extra finesse with their Wraith control. Yeah, he's like a, a later who knows how to play the rest of the game as well. Can uh, pull out yeah, that, those Wraiths yeah. every once in a while. That was the thing that we were we were talking about with Leda a long time ago. It's like, wow, his Wraith control is so good, but if only he could do all the other stuff too. <laughs> but it seems like Speed has that level. Right. Yeah, if you could have like later's like Wraith control, but like Flash's overall game knowledge and stuff, and then like he transitions from the Wraith control into the standard games like flawlessly, like oh my god, he would be such a monster. And like I think he'd have like a Wraith meta, and like StarCraft would look a lot differently. Wow, he sent one Marine across the map. This is just to force the drones Ooh. off the line over here yeah. at the natural. Will he build a bunker? Oh my god, yes. supply depot. depot. <laughs> <laughs> this is so annoying. Ah, <laughs> uh, the links can't get on top of this. Oh man. Oh, man. Beware the ladder this week, uh, Zerg players. Yeah. This is gonna be a thing for a while, I, I, I bet. <laughs> um, oh man, that's so uh, annoying. That's more than annoying, yeah. You're gonna have like Zergs like rush to like drill the marine as it comes in. They're so desperate not to let it get behind the mineral line, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I can mine, I guess, off of a couple of these patches. Jadong, I'm just going to mine what he can while he can. Uh, he has a sunken coming up at the front as the vulture runs in. Is it going to finish in time? Oh, it's pretty close. He's going to run by. Oh, my gosh. He just barely makes it through 10 HP on that. And he's going to keep it alive as long as he can while he starts this Wraith production. This is starting to put a lot of pressure on a Jadong. This is a very yeah. low HP Vulture, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's got uh, some HP on it, it can continuously micro against these Lings forever, killing off more and more and maybe killing off some drones as well. This is going to spiral out of control very quickly. There we go. He picks it off with that one Ling. That was a very scary moment there as that... Vulture gets behind the mineral patches. Things can get really out of control, but he picks it off. But will he be yeah. ready for the wraiths? Where's the spire? <sighs> I mean, there he doesn't is. have one. I mean, he doesn't have one ready yet. Like uh, the wraiths will probably do significant damage to Jadon. I don't think he's necessarily going to be dead, but I feel like he might take. Mm, almost critical damage. I don't know exactly how the, this is going to go down, but he's going to lose a lot of overlords very quickly, and that might put him into a downward spiral where he's not able to produce any Scourge, any Mutalisks for a very long time if he keeps chain losing overlords and drones over and over again here. I hope his over overlords are way better hidden. I think there's one overlord that's also about to be caught here at the third. Oh, I would love to see Burrow right now. Did Jadon go for it? It's so powerful in these situations. It doesn't seem like he has it. Let's see. This drone is about to get picked off. He's running the drone, so it's unlikely that he actually has Burrow. He pops Very it unlikely. into the extractor, and he hasn't lost a drone yet. He still hasn't cleared out that marine, by the way. That thing's still sitting yeah. there. Oh, it's that's so annoying. And the depot's not even finished, so we can just cancel that to get his money back on that later as well. It's kind of crazy. Oh, that is, that is insane. There we go. He does nice cancel. He's going to run out, try to kill one drone. Not going to get it. But uh, <laughs> that was that was insanely <laughs> annoying. Speed, you know, maxing out his annoying stat. Kind of crazy. I mean, that's what we've seen from these modern Terrans is they've just been all over the, 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 the enemy's faces. And, like, I think that's, that's a great modern approach to StarCraft. I feel like Terrans got a little bit too comfortable just sitting back and relaxing. And you really do need to apply pressure while you're growing as Terran, you know? Like, it's, it's one thing to... to, to 
to grow, but to, to, to play a great game of StarCraft, you want to grow while applying pressure to your opponent. Uh, doing a great job of coming to the main base with these uh, raves. Can be picking off one of the overlords very quickly and starting to go to town on these units. Has the um, cloak ability, so as long as he can just dodge out of the way of the overlord, he'll be okay, but he lost one of the raves really quickly there. Took some hits on the others as well. Needs to be dang very seriously careful with these raves. One tiny misstep. They're like paper tigers. They can dish out a lot of damage with their Gemini missiles, but as soon as you take just a few volleys from these mutas or one or two Scourge connect, it can all go downhill from there. Yeah, he thought that the other Overlord was a little bit further away after picking off that first one, thought he could get some more damage going. He's actually going to get... Oh, wow. Gets one drone, but can he hit this Scourge just barely out of range? Nice control there by speed. To play pretty risky, though, with these rates overall. Uh, and, you know, if you lose a few of them, you're just going to completely lose the game. Yeah, it's a very, very um, t um, uh, t tenuous thing. You've got to be really on top of things. Because if you just, like, lose one or two raves accidentally, suddenly you've got no air superiority, and then, then the whole build kind of just falls flat on its face. So if you make one tiny misstep with these raves, it will probably be disastrous for him. So far, he's done a reasonable job. He did do a lot of damage with vultures early on. Uh, although, to be fair, Jadong did weather the storm. Like, he didn't take as much damage uh, as he could have done. Um... Beautiful control with these wraiths, though, like sniping all these Scourge. This is getting pretty maximum trades here uh, for the time being. And uh, killing all these Overlords pretty means that uh, Jadon's going to take infinite damage in the chase micro now. There's not enough Overlord backing him up. So he needs to be careful not to, like, if he's only got one Overlord in reserve here and that gets sniped, he might just take all, too, too much infinite damage on these units. And he's going to get the Overlord for free. He's got the Overlord for free. These units are dead in the water saying, why is he not chasing them? Oh, my gosh. He doesn't chase. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, Speed definitely should have gotten some more damage from that. Oh, diving right in with no Overlord on top of turrets with Cloak Wraiths and a Valkyrie pops out. This seems a little bit crazy from Jadong. He will be able to escape with the majority of these Mutalists still alive, but that seemed nuts to me. Um, yeah. I guess there's some Overlords coming uh, that were going to arrive after the... Uh, turrets were finished, but Jadong's being really aggressive. This, and is, with two, this is too much desperation. Yeah. yeah. With two Valkyries out now, uh, I mean, he's going to go up to three in a moment. And you still got rates and a lot of turrets. You've got to just expand, I think, as Jadong. We're still yeah. one base of speed, so it's not a lot of threat. And there's no marine transition or anything like that. It's just pure air. Playing defensive is not a bad thing in this in this spot. Right, no, I agree. I concur with that, and I, I, yeah, I think expanding and just like using some scourge to maybe like snipe those uh, Valkyries after baiting them with the muters or something like that's a much better option here. Don't, don't be so aggressive on two bases. Just get this third base going, and the uh, and then use the scourge to try and you know get a tempo swing by sniping those Valkyries later, and just so suck up the fact that you're gonna have to deal with the Valkyries. I don't think he should come in right now either, but he's gonna do it and take so much damage onto these muters. Oh. Four Valkyries is getting a little bit insane. I don't know if we have Carapace on these mutas, but now they're going to come across the map, start to uh, kill some overlords. The wraiths are very, very weak, so you have to be super careful with these. This army is crazy what he's bringing forward. Uh, I mean, yeah. four Valkyries and six wraiths. If it works, it works amazingly wow. well. If it doesn't work, it gets completely splattered. Three Hydras are going to prevent him from diving in. He lost one Valkyrie to the Scourge, but he finds a huge group of Overlords. How many of these can he kill? Scourge arrive, and he's going to have to micro away from this. Keep those Valkyries alive. They are all important right now, because as soon as those Valkyries die, the, the Mutas will just overwhelm the entire position. I'm so speechless that, like, more Valkyries haven't fallen. It's really unfortunate for Jadong. So many Scourge dying just before they can connect. Another full connection on those Muters with the Valkyrie missiles. Like, this is just so much damage for Jadong to weather. I don't know if he can stay in this game for much longer. He's taking so many drone hits. The expansion's really slow. So, finally catches some more of these um, Valkyries. The other two are very dangerously low on HP as well. So, two Scourge could kill both of those. But so many drones have been going down to this small pocket of a Wraith uh, fleet here. Here. Just even five being enough to burst laser down those drones with one volley. And uh, now, this is what we should have seen earlier is a little bit more aggression once the cloak with no vision is a, a factor and putting down more Gemini missiles onto those uh, muters as they're on the escape.
Air Terran play. Didn't think I'd ever see it, but here it is. Pure air units. Lurkers are going to come to the front. We do have a bunker with some turrets, but no scans at all. So you might lose all of the uh, supply depots anyway. Mm. Nice snipe there with just yeah. one scourge flying in, picking off a wraith. Always a, a good trade. But would be, cr be crazy if he got drop. If, if Jadon got drop and dropped lurkers onto the expansion of speed, that'd be crazy. That would be pretty strong. Um, all we need is a scan, though, and the wraiths will kill all the lurkers. So That's true. Uh, once that scanner comes online, uh, this is going to be a much weaker play. Maybe while speed is on the other side of the map, we could see some real damage come in, though, with these lurkers. Let's see what happens. This is going to be a big trade going on in a moment. <laughs> Passing each it's other. so funny. Look at that. Look at that. And there's, there's the other unit scouting in the middle as well. At least you went through the strip of uh, non-vision there, mm -hmm. like threading the needle with those lurkers. Uh, now he's going to have a small air of uh, safety, maybe, and these lurkers actually might be able to get something done by pouncing on the, the natural uh, wall in here. They're going in now to check to see what's what. They're going to just probably borrow right on top of this uh, bunker and see if they can just crack that open like an egg. Before, uh, if, he, if he was paying attention, he could at least stim into the bunker or something if he had stim, but I don't think he's got any grades on these units at all. So, unfortunately, like, we'll lose the bunker, but honestly, not too bad. Like, getting all the all kills of the lurker, just losing a bunker here, it's not really that big a deal if there's no way of following it up from Jadong. So... Yeah, all things considered, I think speed's like looking pretty solid in this game. Yeah, I think that Jadong went for the went for the kill there a little bit too hastily. Mm, he yeah. wanted to jump on the bunker rather than just parking himself outside the natural and setting up a position that speed would have to deal with while taking out all of those supply depots uh, outside of range of the turret. You can easily get those kills, but uh, he got a little greedy for sure. Now he's gonna fly into the natural. Sees turrets and defenses ready. The mutas are going to be under threat now with these. Oh, wait, wait. He gets both the Valkyries. Okay. That's not a bad trade at all. He will lose yeah. the mutas, but at least he killed all the Valkyries. He can remake these mutas and uh, potentially take this fight. However, that's a lot of raids coming in. I don't think even three uh, Hydras can stop this. No, uh, definitely if they not. can't kill them in time to, to prevent all the drones from going down. Here comes some more mutas. The raids are starting to take some damage. They're starting to get low, but he's going to deal so much damage to this main base, Shun. Yeah, infinity damage, it seems like, saying so many drones have already gone down in this game to race, and it seems like that number's only going to continue to rise as well. It's even going to rotate around to the natural expansion and get some more on the exit with Overlords as well to compensate. This is absolute wild levels of damage, like 31 supply to 72 for Jado. This is not the game you want to be in. This is a rough one. This is almost like a game you'd give to someone as like a challenge. Like, can you beat this game scenario? Because it's like really hard, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah, this is... This reminds me of like scouts flying around in your base, just killing off everything. Scouts, of course, much more tanky. Far more expensive, but... Um, no less annoying. And the amount of damage that they can do is crazy once they get into high enough numbers and you just don't have... Or you have Hyde just running around chasing them down everywhere, but... Uh, eventually they can just start to fight the Hydras, and that's the level that we might be getting to here soon with speed. Now he's got so many uh, raids. He's continued to make these throughout the entirety of the game. Now starting to switch into tanks and marines, and this tank marine attack, I don't see how Jadon can stop it. Yeah, especially not with having sacrificed those lurkers so uh, frivolously earlier. And again, coming back in, doing so many da so much damage to these raves. Yeah, he's just going to tap out and GG. I can't really blame Jadon. I'm surprised he stayed in the game that long. There really wasn't much counterplay to what was being done to him there, unfortunately. I thought he would go for some kind of like Hail Mary lurker drop while like the raves were distracted while attacking him or something. And like suddenly like there's like lurkers killing all his SCVs and maybe that's a big enough tempo swing to give him some leg in the game. But nah, it seems like too bleak for him, unfortunately. So only down to uh, action uh, left waiting in the wings. But meanwhile, it's going to be speed going up against either Stork or Bisu next. So. Stork versus speed for our next match. Radeon is our map. And this is a matchup that I, like last year, I would not have been too excited about. Now I'm all about it, Shun. I love these two <laughs> players. 
right right i mean yeah like, like about a year or two ago you'd probably be like eh, yeah it's probably not going to be that that special but yeah in recent times these guys have really shown that that there's a lot to offer and and stork is even more interesting because he was a, like a dinosaur a relic of old that somehow has got some new life you know breathed into him it's almost like a you know like a sequel to one of the jurassic park films they just like never seem to die they just keep coming out with like a sequel you know yeah, those sequels just keep on coming and coming. It's uh, definitely time to go extinct. But Stork, he's making a huge comeback uh, in a big way. I thought this season he was going to go even deeper, uh, run in SSL. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's still some things to iron out for sure. But if he keeps this uh, kind of energy, if he keeps this kind of momentum going... There's no limit to how far he can rise. We know that he is championship level material uh, from the Kespa era. Yeah. It's not like, you know, th there's something b stopping him from being that high level. It's just all down to this, this player and what he's willing to put into the game. Yeah, this is what's so interesting about it. I mean, this guy might still be st stuck, st still be here playing from like five, ten years from now, and he still might be putting in good games. Who knows who's going to be the next guy to rise from the ashes once more? It's almost mm -hmm. like these guys are literally phoenixes that die and then get reborn yet again in the future, just because of how much they've got. Uh, they got such. Maybe only a games like StarCraft and something that's as special as StarCraft can even make you that passionate or that dedicated to it to even allow that that thing to transpire in the first place if you know what i'm saying yeah no i i understand what you mean uh, such a special game is the reason why we're still here 20 years later casting these yeah. and enjoying these games and we're still hype about uh these matches and who's rising and who's uh, what stories they tell the stories uh, the the adventures that these guys go on when they try to uh, qualify for these different tournaments and show up these amazing games now i want to talk a little bit about this one stork has already thrown down his nexus his nexus on 19 before his dragoon so he's getting a little bit greedy uh, with the early nexus but seeing that it's a cross map position i think he should be able to get away with it speed on the other hand opened with a uh, pretty early cc does he have a factory started yet? I think he does, but... Uh, I don't see it. I don't actually see it. Okay, I think he just started it now. He's definitely floating out his uh, barracks. I'm just looking at the mini-map yeah. right oh, now. Oh, there it is. There it is. So, yeah, he just got that started. He went for CC before factory, but kind of a mixed gas opener. So, not a full uh, gasless fast expand, but a pretty fast CC nonetheless. Yeah, very fast command center. And I mean, Stork is going to be super safe with the cross map Nexus first. It's Radiant, such a, the longest rush distance we have in the game. It's such a beautiful standard map as well. Like, they've done a great job with this. Like, we had some good standard maps in the past, you know, Polypoid, Vermeer has been okay. Sylphid actually was a pretty balanced map, but it wasn't a standard map. You know, it had like a lot of gimmicks to it and what have you, which made it a bit lopsidedly balanced. Whereas uh, this map is like really like right in the middle 14 bases like beautiful long rush distances forcing open play and like much more dynamic range in the mid game phases yeah it's a perfect balance in this map i'm really impressed with the map makers and pro gamers that managed to put this together i think they worked very hard on it absolutely it's given us some great games and i think we'll continue to do so for many seasons going forward i would love to see uh, other maps made by amd come back though like vermeer when are we going to see yeah. that back in the map pool? I miss that map. I don't know. Uh, it's a good map. I think it was a little bit less balanced than people originally thought. I can't remember mm. what the exact statistics were on that, but I think it turned out to be a tiny bit less balanced than we originally thought. Something like this, I think, is much more well-rounded and what have you. So, yeah, but I do agree, though. I really like the geometry of uh, Vermeer and how it played and what have you. Even if it was slightly lopsided in balance, it's still a nice map to play on and watch. And we hope that more... Uh, AMD maps will come out in the future. It's awesome to have uh, big companies that are interested in, in still promoting to uh, StarCraft fans by creating maps and, and doing different little things like uh, s supporting different tournaments and stuff. It's, it's amazing. So 
I think it's just fantastic that we have companies uh, interested in the yeah. game still. Uh, I think there's some loyalty there. I yeah. think, like, I mean, certain companies and, like, StarCraft's been around for a very long time. And Kesper was founded a very long time ago. And a lot of these companies and what have you have been, you know, working hand in hand with StarCraft and, you know, Blizzard and technically. And um, so over the years, I guess there's maybe some kind of loyalty that's there as a result. They've both kind of got each other's backs at least a little bit. Yeah, cause, I mean, you're not selling AMD brand new right. graphics chips to many StarCraft players. Like right. they don't, they don't need exactly. much of a setup. They don't need much of a PC setup to play this game. But yeah, that's, yeah, these, that's a love sponsor right there. Yeah. I, I would not, I would not doubt that the the executives or what have you that are in charge of like maintaining that that sponsorship and what have you or whatever. I bet you any money those guys like have have some kind of fandom for the game. Either they were players themselves or they like have some kind of vested interest in the community through just a, a spectator point of view or just in like what it's done for esports. I mean, it literally is the godfather of esports. It created esports. I mean, how can you not have some respect for that? Absolutely. So uh, that is exciting to have those type of relationships still flourishing in 2024. We've got Stork taking his third base now, sending out some probes. He has the, the wall in. Speed's going to try and get over there just in time to catch some of these probes, but nice block by Stork. Stork is playing very solid. Hasn't done any damage to Speed just yet, but he's deflecting everything and getting his bases up in short yeah. order i think it, it's it, gonna be five yeah five cool. fact into a third base is is that what you're thinking yeah. yeah that's exactly what i'm thinking i think that's the play as well i think that makes sense very mid-range builds here from both players uh, have propelled us into a very quick mid game uh, the 20 nexus not quite as greedy as a nexus first but still a lot of greed there speed opening with a, a gas into command center and getting the factory after the command center is also a little bit greedy but uh, more towards the mid-range uh, of greed and so both no. players very even right now you can see just a 20 supply advantage for uh, Stork, as this push starts to come out, is he actually going to go across the map, though, or is this just him threatening? I feel like a CC has been built on the high ground above his I feel his like he's third. just posturing to take his third, yeah. Yeah, this... Oh, no, that's not a CC. That's actually a floating eBay. eBay, so, you know, maybe he does want to push. Maybe just opening up some space to get vultures out on the map? I'm not so sure. Right. Yeah, I don't know exactly what his plan is. Maybe he himself is kind of trying to gauge what he should do. Like, he's trying to think, do I want to push out and take my third on location? Or do I want to go for a push, just push here? He sees the Reavers and he knows he's five facts. So he's got a pretty good, um, you know, like pretty good expected value to have he had in the trades there. With the five factories, you can kind of be a little bit more aggressive than usual with the Reaver uh, you trying to skirmish you down every time you siege and push across the map. You've got a little bit more push potential than usual, but it is radio on it is cross map not ideal and against the nexus first i mean yeah i don't know if this would be ideal for speed to push here i feel like just the five fact into third is the way safer more optimistic play in the long run the third base has started on location not a lot of defenses over near the natural and stork's gonna put a little wedge in between these two bases uh, landing the, the the reavers there and picking off quite a few vultures as they kind of increment out of these factories getting a little value uh, while continuing to expand his fourth base is already on the way and templar hmm. archives finishing up so He's going to have all the tools necessary to break speed when he pushes. It'll probably be yeah. something like an 8 to 10 factory play out of speed. Uh, once this third base is fully online, uh, that's about all that you can afford. And speed may push with 1-1. One, one, uh, or he, he could sit back, kind of wait for uh, a bigger army and try to push out, take his fourth, and go into 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but that's a, a more long-term play, and Stork may be able to take right. the entirety of the map during that time. 
Yeah, I, I feel like, um, if anything, like, Speed may, might want to consider, like, being uh, aggre aggressive in an expansive sense, where he maybe even considers expanding vertically to be able to push into this northeast quadrant of the map to prevent Stork from dividing the map horizontally that way. Beautiful drop potential coming in for the natural expansion, though. Uh, the third, sorry, uh, with the um, shuttle play Reavers getting quite a lot of damage done there, trying to evacuate as many of those works as possible. Just cycle in the Reavers into the main base, but the shuttle goes down. There's one more shuttle left to kind of escort, but the other shuttle also gets taken out from the low ground as well, so now just going to be slugging it out with these Reavers into the main base, trying to see if they can get into the mineral line. There are another mine hit there. Beautiful connection, but the other mine not quite in position to get that. Might be able to get uh, these Reavers quickly with the one tank shot, though. Pretty good damage from those Reavers from Stork. I don't know. That might just barely be enough damage that Stork is now going to be, like, you know, just giving the green light to go ham in this game now, so. Go ham. Just start taking a bunch of bases in the, the other parts of the map, you mean? I, I think you might be yeah. right if that's the case. Yeah. You can just... Uh, send probes into top right and bottom left, make a bunch of pylons and cannons on high ground, start to put gateways everywhere, and it's going to be very hard for Speed to push after that. He's lost quite a few SCVs, he's lost uh, tanks, now he's going to lose another big chunk of SCVs to a couple of storms. Not bad, actually, with the pull. And Speed yeah. will keep most of these alive, but so many of them are badly, badly damaged, and a follow-up drop could be devastating. Well, this is the exact kind of play that we were uh, talking about Stork being um, having a high potential of. He's very good at like just a very st standard, straight-up game. Like He doesn't need to do anything fancy. He can just play a very standard uh, game of PVT and just somehow seem to bowl over some of the best Terrans in the world like it's nothing. And he's been recently playing like this over the last, not even year, I would say more like six to eight months. He suddenly just bursted out on the scene with more fire than usual, like a phoenix from the ashes like we were talking about earlier and uh, yeah somehow putting out not only standard games but really high quality standard games where he's out maneuvering these uh, modern guys which is really impressive for a dinosaur to be out maneuvering like the modern kids like yeah i don't know what planet stork is on but i want to go and have a little journey there sometime <laughs> well speed is not uh, saturating his bases properly as you can see almost all the scvs are over at the natural and very few are at the third base Maybe a response to the fact that Stork keeps trying to drop at that third. He doesn't want to bring too much uh, over to that base. The shuttle gets picked off, but there's plenty more behind this. And Speed is having a hard time getting his factory count up. He doesn't have that many factories. He's got uh, just the five that yeah. he built before. And I think he added on a few more in his main just now, but... Well, you, His... you have to make seven before making your fourth here. So he, right. he must have at least seven. He must have at least seven. It's going to get a drop over towards top right. That's a, an excellently timed drop here before cannons get finished. Uh, a drop coming into the natural, though, could deal a huge amount of damage. Zealots on top of all of this. Going to go after the armory, potentially. I don't see any storms mixed in. Do you? Oh, there they are. The storms are going to be thrown out on some of these SCVs. Uh, escaping the main base. Got to pick that up again. Try to drop it in the natural. Stork could get huge damage. He has a lot of potential damage with this. Oh my. That's a lot of SCVs, SCVs stacked up. Yep. Uh, maybe it's gaining some energy. I don't think he's got it just yet. Absolute craziness going on in this game. I mean, Speed's trying to hold his own. He's almost, almost got enough supply where he won't just straight up die to an engagement with Stork. But he's just on the edge there. And these Storm Drops do so much critical damage. Oh, oh my God. I don't think he's got a lot of SUVs remaining. And it's going to be another additional Storm here saying, oh, oh. How many SUVs have died today? So many SCVs have gone down. Stork could just transition into whatever he wants at this point. He could go into carriers if he wants, but look at all the gateways over here. Well, how did those get unpowered? I guess it was from the earlier drop out of speed, but he's going to get those back up and operational uh, long before he needs them. Uh, currently maxed out, ready to dive in against a 133 supply army. Speed is looking completely impotent in this game. He's hardly done any damage to Stork, and he's taken so many blows. 
is yeah. on his knees it's kind of right crazy. now. Do you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of. Do you know um, Sherlock Holmes? I think it was one of the movies where he's like, like hitting the guy, but he's like calculating in his head how he's gonna hit the guy to like, like you know, like dis, like discombobulate him like perfectly to win the fight. Like not, not winning with like brute strength, but like really tactically, just like attacking his muscles and his vision and his lungs and shit. This is seems. This is what it's like with Stork. Like Stork's just very like tactically just picking his apart his pose opponent and apart with like just the right amount of tools. Another drop here. Oh my. This is when things get really insane when <laughs> he can just throw away four shuttle, five shuttles into your natural with a huge amount of zealots and he just doesn't even care. Oh my goodness, that storm as well. Dealing so much damage. Another storm. Gonna kill a whole bunch of tanks. Oh, he's he's forcing so many bad trades out of speed and even though he's just oh wasting masses of shuttles, uh, these some of these are going to get he out, is, and he yeah, doesn't even care. Look at his money. He None of it care. matters. I mean, he, he can just remax. Oh, more Stork in the main as well. This is crazy. Like Stork is playing like an absolute machine right now. Like this is kind of wild that Stork is playing this strong while just doing a straight up game. Whenever the Protoss gets this far ahead, it's devastating Taren just yeah. can't do anything he's got 112 supply and he's gonna try to push but he really doesn't have <laughs> options if he sits here and tries to rebuild now he's gonna lose everything okay he drops the now, no no energy temple that's gonna do nothing the, but the fine. supplies are a little misleading he's lost so many SEVs that he has more army than the supplies does indicate that's why we see so many tanks there but look how clumped up they are they're gonna get bombed and stormed oh. into oblivion oh my god Ouch. <laughs> Speed taps out. That was a brutal finisher to a torturous game for Terran. Look at any flex tape. He gets the clapper. Stork is truly back in that final form we were talking about. He, we haven't seen him play like this uh, since Kespa era. It is so yeah. fun to see. If he was able to pull out games like that in SSL, I feel like he could have gone right to the finals. <sighs> I think so as well, and this is why I get excited about it, because it gives me chills, because I know what this guy is capable of, okay? Like, uh, call me a nerd, sure, but uh, trust me, this this guy is like on the verge of maybe making a comeback, and it's so exciting to watch. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about Protoss' chances of taking home a win this week. After that performance from Stork, he's now up against Action, who's spawning in the top right-hand corner. Pantheon is our map. Uh, yep. Has he been looking as good against Zerg as he has against Terran? Uh, hmm, no, but his PVZ has been improved a lot as well. So while he's not playing as good in PVZ as his PVT, he's certainly way better than he used to be. He used to be comically bad in PVZ in a few years back. Now he kind of seems like he can hang a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, he was never like snow level bad. Um, in the past, I know that. Yeah, well, bad Snow compared was. to the ranking of player that he sure. is, right? Like you, you would expect someone like him. But this is how Starcraft is. Like usually, there's like even if, even even if you're a god in one matchup, you might be an absolute sausage monkey in another one, right? That seems to be the default, actually. Yeah, that most yeah. players end up like that, um, being I think very poor and and specializing in one matchup. I've I've heard from, from I've heard from a Korean that. That that's because of a, an an Asian cultural thing, where in a Western culture we're much more likely to like focus on our weaknesses and like be more well rounded, whereas the Asian cultures are more likely to like focus on their strengths and just double down. You know, I I think that's probably that probably makes sense. I don't I don't know anyone uh, any foreign players who have like. A very very specialized matchup you know what i mean like yeah. i don't yeah. know any foreign players who are like oh they're just garbage at that one matchup but they're amazing at you know uh, this other one so that there might be something to that shun uh, maybe you guys think can so. think of a, an example and put it down in the comments uh, i just can't think of anything right off the top now 
Stork's getting in here. He's trying to block this hatchery. Action bringing two drones over to that third. Trying to get this hatchery Oof. down, but oh my gosh, he continues to block that. If he'd brought the, the, the Zealot over here, wouldn't that have done a lot more damage? I feel like bringing that uh, yeah. over to the third, he could have completely but denied that third base. I mean, to be fair though, like there's more chance of the Zealot being guaranteed cleaned up because there's no way the Zealot can ever get to safety that way. Whereas mm. now at least like he has some more control over the game. But it, it does lose potential in slowing down the third, but I think it, it makes this, the game state much less flimsy for him. And he's losing his scout probe, so having no vision, he'd much rather have the Zealot alive now. Uh, given this game state. So, yeah, it's a little bit dangerous because you never quite know what's going to be coming from action. And a lot of action could be coming in the way of, like, tons of Zerglings and what have you barreling down on natural as far as Stork knows. There is a decent amount of Zerglings, but nothing too crazy. So Stork's going to play super safe and wait until he gets some cannons up before even thinking about checking what's what and again. I think this position is not too bad for Stork. He only built a couple of Zealots. Um... Didn't lose any of them. Lost a couple of probes, of course, with the scout, but... Uh, he's got the wall. He's got the... Complete... Ling tight... Uh, space here with the one cannon in behind. Action is yeah. going to 973 him, though. Most yeah. likely. And... You can very quickly die. This is a strong build at every single level. And if you don't this get out the scout... This is the strongest build. Yeah, if you don't get out and scout, and there's really not much chance of Stork doing that for for a little bit of time, because there could be some sort of Ling attack, um, yep. he could just die. Absolutely could just die to this. Yeah, if there's uh, one or two of you uh, not in the know, 973 basically means you've got nine drones mining minerals uh, in your main, seven in your natural, three in your third base. That's the optimal amount to make a very strong production of three hatchery worth of hydralisks to try and bowl the the Protoss player before he's got enough cannons set up in the early game. Uh, sometimes you can also kind of fake that and kind of bluff it and do a transition into a normal game, but just use that to apply pressure to kill the wall and to force the Protoss player into overmaking too many cannons because each cannon they make is essentially a gateway they're not producing. So a little bit of a power scale tipping balance here where both players are trying to like uh, either commit to the attack and kill him or make it look as uh, as like, you know, convincing as possible to force too much of a reaction backup cannon being built by stork now he's got one extra cannon at the back um, may end up building another one he's got one probe ready for this the hydras have been hidden quite well there's another cannon okay so he he is aware that there's this possibility and making that extra cannon, will he... Uh, he would cancel that if no Hydras arrive. But now that he sees the Hydras, he's just going to let that finish. Another cannon will start. He's building these quite far back from the wall. So it seems like he's just resigned to the fact that he may end up losing this no. forge. And he's just going to transition out of that. Probably build two forges in the main. Yeah, I think if he made cannons too far forward, he'd be at risk of being busted, and that's what he's scared about. So he'd much rather just sacrifice the front and like get a guaranteed line of cannons in the back here. Mm -hmm. If he had maybe one more cannon already set up at the bottom, he might have considered putting forward cannons. But yeah, he only had two cannons in a good position, so it was just not worth to recommit to the wall. That makes sense to so just break the wall and like you know, make a couple of forges in your main base and just resign to it. It's unfortunate, but I, I agree with Stork's decision here. I think it's good that he's making this compensation. Yeah, this makes sense. Uh, he's definitely going to be okay uh, from this spot. Evolution Chamber starts, so he, we actually might see a, a scenario where action is ahead on upgrades. But Stork's going to start right. double forge in his main uh, right away. Yeah. Drones are being made back in home for action. He's going up into six hatch hydra. This is about as standard as uh, standard as standard gets when it comes to uh, Zerg versus Protoss. Just killing the wall, switching into Spire. Uh, everything looking pretty even uh, after this initial opener. 
Yeah, I would recommend like all Zerg players learn this build and learn how to transition and commit to this build so that you have a more fundamental understanding of how this matchup works. Because the way the timings of this build line up does teach you a lot about PvZ. And if you can also then start to understand how you transition and like the different points of transitional weakness in your builds and the builds build variations, it will teach you so much about the game. So I really recommend this build for everyone. Yeah, it's uh, a build that can get you some pretty easy wins as well when you're struggling against uh, Protoss if the, the Protoss is not able to or not willing to build enough cannons uh, not able to right. scout you then you can get some good you can get some good easy wins but uh, it can be it a pretty challenging. It has the highest win percentage. Yeah. It has it the highest win percentage out of all the other builds. Mm. It can be kind of challenging to pull off if you... Uh, are trying to transition as well like getting the hydras into position to hit the uh, the wall in without being hit by the uh, cannons and then you know defending against the corsair at the same time you know building up your drone count and uh, switching into uh, upgrades and and macro it, it's it, it is quite challenging but that's that's what this matchup is all about is balancing and, and reacting to what your opponent is doing and the pressure that he's able to put on and so far action's doing a fantastic job of that he's blocked the corsairs he's blocked the zealots from coming across the map and dealing any damage to him is he going to have lurkers in time for this uh, next push that's going to come dark archon yeah I'd love to see we've been it seeing this a lot yeah i've been seeing this a lot lately right i think it's starting to become the meta i mean i'm sure tasteless is happy because like years and years ago he was always saying like oh dark arc on so good man like you can just like strum the mutas and stuff now all the pro gamers are starting to catch on and actually do that a little bit more consistently well we have seen it in the past so like uh, it was his idea or anything but certainly maybe a little bit more of an underused unit not as bad as maybe something like a queen is maybe has a little bit more value in certain situations uh than otherwise but yeah i don't know like we might not see a commitment into muters from action to make full value out of this Archon, especially now that it's probably been spotted by these mutilists. He's going to swing into the main base and maybe even catch this um, high, high Templar in transition as well. He's splitting off the mutas to make sure that the Dark Archon can't get maximum value. Love it. Doesn't get the Templar kill, but uh, doesn't lose all of these mutas either. He's still got them available to try and jump in. More mutas are popping out, so maybe... More of a trend or more of a, a commitment than we thought. Action gonna rotate no. around and potentially fly in as the Protoss army moves out on the map. Maybe go for some Templar that are following, or maybe just dive into the main, try to deal some damage there. Hydras are spread out all over the map looking for a straggler zealots as he builds up a huge amount of drones. Wow, massive drone yeah. wave comes out. Gonna be saturating that fourth base. Uh, I'd like to see it soon. I don't see a transition though from action. I don't, I don't see a, a hive play or anything in this near future. I think it's just going to be no, this is, straight up later. Well, you, you don't need to. You don't need to. You don't need to transition into hive until they've got their third base secured. And this right. entire time, Stork's been on two base, so he's been happy just to stay on battle zerg and optimize his economy and uh, army. And then uh, he focuses on tech only when he's forced to. So this is exactly what I was I was thinking was going to happen. As soon as the army moves out, the mutas fly into the main base. He turns away at the last moment, seeing three cannons, though. And that's understandable. Three cannons. If there was one storm hidden somewhere, one Templar hidden under one of those buildings, you can lose everything really quickly. So he's just going to back off for now and start to set up a position that's going to be hard for Stork to push out of. Hydras are spread yep. everywhere. Hydras are ready for backstabs, for attempts at running in and, and picking off some of these Templar as well. Uh, Action has well, so much vision on the map. He's ready for this. Stork is completely blind right now. The Stork is kind of counting on this heavy fortress uh, setup with this cross base at 3 o'clock, but the reality is he's, his, his natural expansion is exposed. He can get his rally uh, cut off and like lose, lose units and that are in transit and basically become surrounded and engulfed. Like We see the Muas coming into the natural expansion and checking what's what, seeing if they can snipe any High Templars or what have you. does need to be careful because the Dark Archon is still out on the board, so Maelstrom combo could still be a threat here to these Mutalists, so Action will want to be careful 
uh, and just try and keep Stork on these three bases for as long as possible. I don't think he's too worried about the three bases. He'll just let him have it and slowly tech into um, Hive now. We saw the Queen's Nest coming down at 12 o'clock just a minute ago or so, so Hive will be on the way now. He'll be probably just trying to get a fifth base online, and he'll only probably force a trade with Stork if Stork either gets out of position on the map or tries to take a fourth. I think we're going to see that fourth taken pretty soon from Stork. He's got a big army moving through the middle. Has a lot of storms. He's been building up storms the entire game. I don't think we've seen any storms thrown down as of yet. So these Templars that were made early on, they don't have the amulet upgrade yet, but they are looking very... Oh wait, we did see a couple of storms, sorry, thrown down on some lurkers a little bit earlier. Uh, so some of those were spent, but they've regained a lot of that energy and this army is it's looking a little bit out of position what do you think should moving through the left hand side are we gonna get yeah. completely surrounded stork is uh I mean, pretty far out on the map right now he will he will do better than you think he will do but it, it's still a little bit of a weird decision but it will it will pay off a little bit initially it's just what will happen next was we will be the deciding factor there's not enough storm here to keep him alive for very long like he'll keep the zerg back for like a minute or so like skirmishing with the zerg and what he was hoping to do was to try and surprise action by pouncing on one of these bases at the top left here see if he can get the snipe on that or at least get some drone kills but he now he knows the danger he's going to run with his tail between his legs a little bit try and see if he can distract action with these zealots maybe on the right hand side while he now pushes back once again with this army into this northwestern threshold see if he can get up into that pocket maybe kill base beautiful storm going down onto that trio of lurkers there uh, i don't know like maybe there's enough meat in this protoss infantry that he could actually go the distance here. There's enough Dragoons to kind of just like rain down phase disruption shots, but not enough Storm left in the tank. So eventually these forces are going to get completely obliterated. There's one or few, two more good Storms coming out with some Zealot reinforcements. Stork's just barely holding the line, but he's already been whittled down so much in his Dragoon count. The 2-1 upgrades from this Hydralist timing really paying dividends now for um, action here as he's trading very cost efficiently despite a few Storms going not his way. Uh, it was almost a reasonable hold there from Stork, but he ends up running away with a meager army. Uh, hardly enough to even defend a fourth base if you wanted to take one right now. And action is going to be accelerating into Hive Tech. He's got those upgrades rolling really, really well now. And he should have Defilers on the map before long uh, with masses of units popping out every second oh the fourth base is already under assault he is going to get up here and probably defend that yeah he will keep this alive but sork is under so much pressure man i really wish he wouldn't yeah. have pushed uh, so cavalier onto the left hand side of the map or right if he had at least like fully committed to get up onto one of these high grounds so that the defense like the, the position is so hard to break that action i think you know, wastes a lot of units I think I know why he did it. I think he knows that Action was playing ABC in the sense of like Action was like choosing not to engage because there was no fourth base and mm. Stork knew that he Action was trying to avoid engagement. So Stork was trying to force him to engage by, you know, quotations, putting his army out of position to kind of bait him into attacking him. Like I think he was trying to force the engagement. It just didn't go the way he thought it would. Uh, these zealots going down is kind of symptomatic of the game state uh, and what we've seen so far out of Stork. He's thrown away a lot of Zealots. The engage that we saw initially was uh, pretty poor in terms of him just sending in his Zealots against a lot of Lurkers and he lost so much of the front line of his army. Now we've got Dark Swarm with a big flank coming forward. Action's going to completely surround and annihilate this force. This is excellent, excellent control out of him. Ling's wow. coming from the reinforcement path. Great Maelstrom plus Storm combo, but it's not going to be enough. Every single Templar is going to go down. All the yeah. uh, important parts of the army for Stork have vanished. And with only 20 supply, or with a full 20 supply advantage from Action, he Man, should be able crazy. to kill this. It's crazy how these Zerg players have this level of macro. Like, certain players like Action just have a different level of, like, macro gear they can kick into. And the amount of units they can churn out is just scary. And it's like, if they were even slightly worse at macroing, they barely wouldn't have enough units to flank and, like, kill everything off. But they always manage to reach critical mass. And it's a really beautiful thing to see, saying, like, like a Zerg firing in all cylinders like this. Mm-hmm.
for sure this is action at his absolute best where nothing has truly gone wrong in this game he's just been able to macro like a god he will be taking a lot of damage to this dt it seems because he's paying attention to pushing into this fourth base and preventing that from really coming online so eight kills 10 kills it's a lot of damage in that base but there's just so many bases available for action and this fourth is yeah. likely to fall I, I don't know that it's gonna matter 14 kills on that dt now is pretty insane i mean it gives it gives comeback potential so if he mm -hmm. can somehow get a scrappy hold going and not take too much probe losses to these lurkers under dark swarms and prevent any zerg reinforcements getting up here and distract action long enough that he can't just rally units across the map and finish the job he is trying to go for that though he's identified that this is a big point of weakness for stork now there's hardly any units in defense very easy to come in and reinforce this mineral only base assault that's already in operation with dark swarms that are just about to run out uh, really crazy uh, effort here from action like he's just been able to absolutely decimate someone of stork's caliber and like, made it look easy like and and it's really nice to see like zergs somehow being able to produce this much like i don't i don't even know how their hands move in such a way to macro like this uh, action clears out that fourth base that's a really big key thing uh, going on in this game drop landing in the main base four zealots are going to go to work on some tech potentially but action i mean all of the chips are in his favor all the the, the cards have just fallen perfectly into place and uh, even though the spawning pool will likely go down it's a uh, small it's a very small win for stork who's yeah. already so far behind i mean 40 supply advantage what can we say action is moments away from closing this one out yeah stork is basically just like trying to pull any cards from the deck that are his outs he knows there's a few things that can like kind of stall for time like you know he knows there's like one or two options he still has to kind of stall out the game a tiny bit but none of these options lead to him winning the game they just lead to him gging a few moments later but now is the time for finally to type those two letters and instead it's going to be action going up against light next like i'm blown away by like how clean that was from action on to light versus action we got light in the top left hand corner action down the bottom left finally on deja vu i know i said that uh game number two wasn't it or was it game yeah, number one deja vu of you saying <laughs> that is deja vu <laughs> it's correct deja vu section deja vu squared we've got <laughs> A Wallen started here for light, and before you even say it, for pool. Yeah, I'm telling you. Tell me how. <laughs> right, right. No, I just, just want to ask everyone in the chat, okay? Like seriously, not, not, every game you watch, watch how many times the Terran walls in, and how many times if if the had the Zerg player had gone for pool, with you know what I'm saying? Like just calculate that, and then and then be like, oh my god, he's right. <laughs> I'm glad that you gave them the question and also the conclusion there, Shun. That's very helpful. I have to lead them into the right way. You know, these sausage monkeys, I mean, some of them, you know, like, some, don't get me wrong, some of you guys are, are the really bright sparks, but some of you guys, like, I don't know, man, I'm surprised, like, you guys manage to, like, take an expansion sometimes. There's some, uh, there's some dim bulbs out there, for sure, in every community. I think there's, there's more bright, bright lights, though, in StarCraft than most that's true for sure it takes a special type of person to even realize what what they're looking at when they see a game this beautiful nah, that's true that's true i mean i guess you could make the argument that some of them just had dumb luck though and they just stumbled upon the best game and they just happened to be indoctrinated <laughs> into it i mean that's what i think happened to me i don't think i was smart enough to realize it was that good initially i think i kind of just got lucky and stumbled upon the best game ever made and it all just kind of went uphill from there that's very uh, insightful of you. That's very that's very modest of you, Shun. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm the most modest person ever, as Trump would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Light's about to throw down his command center and action is getting into a very normal opener. Uh, I think he did go for overpool though with these lings out so early 
uh, putting a little pressure on, but not really able to do much. He didn't build as many lings as we saw a queen build. Yeah. So he's not going to be in as bad of a position, but he doesn't see the 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 marines moving across the map. Five. No, he doesn't. Five have the light. naked marines. Six naked it's marines. The, it's dangerous. Lights, camera, action, saying it's light versus darkness. Unfortunately, and without that light, it's going to be action unprepared here as the marines start to surge into natural expansion. Drones not even able to get to the safety of the main base as they might be killed in transit. So more drones coming from the south to see if they can set up a pincer surround. More and more drones now going to be coming out, trying to get on top of these marines before they can make it to the bunker. The starting to finish up. Does drill behind the mineral line, getting a beautiful uh, slide onto those marines. And the damage is just barely enough to start cleaning up all of these marines before they can get into this bunker as the SUVs also die. So pretty good hold here from action, all things considering. I don't think he lost too many drones there. Oh, oh he's got three in the main. I think he lost too many. I think he lost too many. <laughs> I, th I thought he had a few more in the main. Okay, that's a little bit too many. My bad. Oh, man. The position oh, was so nice from like he even pulled the SCV off the bunker, uh, stopped making it, uh, just to get a little bit more damage or get a little bit more you know blocking going with the SCV and the damage was pretty insane. The counter yeah. could be strong, but with this wall back at home, you're really not going to be able to do much, especially with the SCV in the wall. If he had just like two or three more drones, I think. Like, unironically, he'd be fine and be able to do a very strong two-hatch muta timing, which would actually punish Light a little bit, because he would, wouldn't have enough marines and turrets and what have you to defend the initial mutalisks. But because he just barely killed enough drones in that, and there was enough lost mining time, it seems like we won't have that critical mass timing that we need from action to punish Light. So I think Light's going to get away with murder here. Yeah, this is similar to the Queen uh, versus Royal game. Uh, at the beginning of the cast, where the Zerg player's taken some damage. Uh, they just haven't got a, a good stable footing in the game. And Light is the type of player, just like Rola, who knows exactly how to punish. He knows exactly how to uh, eke out even more damage and force more reactions, take control of the game, and never give you a really good... Uh, opportunity to come back now he is going to start some turrets he just cancelled one of his barracks because he realized oh crap you actually got your spire down during all of that uh, yeah. aggression that was going on with the marines and he realizes that action may be just going all in with mutas uh, from this Whoa, spot that's the play that I thought might be able to give him the best comeback potential, but I right. feel like he just barely doesn't have enough juice because of... Yeah, yeah, like one of, literally, like, I think even just two more drones, and now I think he'd come in here and smash light. But literally, to just one or two drones, not enough to come in here and hit the critical timing. Like, it's just too little too late, unfortunately, for uh, action. I do think that light's going to be able to stabilize. You can't even mine gas. Oh my goodness. Are we going to see a, a third base come up? I think so. Yeah. What's the follow-up from that, though? Are we going to see Crazy Zerg? Like, Queen tried to pull yes. off? Yes, most likely. Um, it makes sense. Like, it makes sense that he's cutting at muters now because he knows he can't do any critical damage anyway, so he might as well just make nothing but drones and take a third and just play for the uh, mid-game. Um, it makes sense here from action. I, I don't fault him at all for his decision-making. Right. That's quite a few drones. Light's getting a scan there in the naturally. He knows what's happening, that there must be some sort of transition coming, so he's going to start his factory immediately. Good reaction so far from Light. He hasn't been able to uh, put on any more pressure, but he's going to move out now, and there's not a lot that action can do against this. Like, he's really going to struggle to stop this marine force coming across the map, yeah. and it'll be a lot of indirect damage probably being done to action, and that he's going to be forced to make a huge amount of units or a bunch of sunken colonies to keep himself alive. Yeah, and he doesn't want to make sunkens because then the sunkens can't help save the third, so it's like you kind of want to make muters and lings to clear this up, so you're kind of mostly reliant on mutabilisk micro to shave off as many marines as possible to like you know prevent needing to make too many sunkens and lings and what have you uh, i don't know how good his mutalist micro will end up being but 
I don't know. Like the, the the main issue is that he because he did the drone transition into the third without making too many mutilists. Now we have a much larger biomass for him to have to contend with, so it's much harder for him to skirmish and shave off a few marines here and there. So we're not going to see crazy quick ultras uh, from action. He is going to transition into lurker. So a more standard approach from action mm. as he dives into this ooh, main base ooh, he's gonna ooh. kill two turrets with lings running by the bunker as well nothing inside there he could do a lot of damage in this main base oh. he's forced light to turn around and head back home this is a huge swing if this continues action yeah, is gonna get a whole bunch more damage wait where is he going with the meters okay he sees the marines are coming back he was afraid that those marines might be heading for his natural so he turned those around for a second and that's gonna buy light enough time to come back in here and stabilize no, there was three marines that got siphoned off to come down into this bottom uh, base in the uh, the bottom right here um i don't think there's any drones made there so luckily because uh, action didn't have enough money to support making units and drones at the same time like he's not going to get punished too heavily down there he'll be able to send some zerglings to save that hatchery i believe uh, just purely focused on trying to shave off as many of these marines as possible he knows there's too much of a mass here if he doesn't shave off enough of these marines he could just be in a dangerous spot so so he, he's trying as hard as he can to micro. He's doing a pretty good job. He's shaving off really good connections here with these mutilists. I'm really impressed with the control, but suddenly now, suddenly these mutilists are falling. Some links coming into support. They might... Nah, it's just barely not. I thought there was more links coming than that. Unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be enough in it for action. I think he's going to have to try and just transition. He built a lot of sunken colonies back at home. This natural full of sunken colonies and... Really nothing else to defend. Hardly any mutilists left. Barely any drones at all and none in the bottom right. This is looking dire for action. He's still continuing to produce mutas and he will GG. tap out. GG. Action just can't put it together. It felt like Light might have been close to defeat there for a moment though when the mutas right. were in the main base dealing damage. If only action had stayed just killed the turrets with the lings and mutas and gone to work on a lot more SCV kills. He may have been able to bring himself back, but he was afraid of just straight up dying. Uh, sometimes you have to make those hard choices though, right? Like you have to just take the gamble, dive yeah. in and... But he, he was... But he made the third base to do that. He right. only made the third base to make sure that the, the Terran move out would occur so that then he would have an opportunity to go into the main base for that in the first place. So he had right. that completely mapped out in the originally. Uh, yeah, that's why he didn't even make any drones at this um, third base. So it was really well planned out from action. It's just the execution wasn't there considering the fact that he lost one or two drones too many in that defense at the start. Just didn't have enough gas in the tank to really punish like that. Here we are in the final game of the night, Light versus Bisu. An excellent way to end. And guys, before we go, I want to remind you to go down into the description, click on the first link, give KCM a like and a sub. Uh, that'll link you over to the video in Korean. So give him some of your support and uh, give him some thanks for putting on such an excellent tournament. It's been such a fun season this, this time, Shun. Yeah. I think we've had some pretty exciting um, weeks, uh, pretty much back-to-back, uh, -back, very interesting seasons. You never quite know what you're going to get. This is literally like a box of chocolates from Forrest Gump, KCM, and in the best way as well. You never quite know where things are going to, you know, where, 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 the, where the terrain will look like once the cookies have all been crumbled down onto it. You don't really know what's going to be what. And each week you might have some craziness happening that you wouldn't even thought that you would formulate those sentences in your brain ever. Like stalk all kills, like blah, 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 or whatever the, the equation is. Like just absolute mind bender of a event to have to be it. And it's a real treat as well. Yeah, for sure. It's It adds something to the enjoyment of ASL as well. I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And we get to see, you know, the level of these players and uh, the strategies implemented on the maps that they're going to be playing in the biggest tournament in the world as well. Uh, it just, yeah. it adds that little extra like, level of excitement to the game uh, and what's going to be uh, brought out in the ASL. So over here from Light, 
starting things off with a bit of a wall. Uh, it's not, you know, fully walled in like you would against Zerg, but he set up a position that's going to give him a lot of options for defense against the uh, Zealot that's coming across the map. He's also got the bunker done, so this Zealot probably won't do anything, especially if he blocks with the SCV. He even brings the SCV forward, ready for that block. Bisu just pulling back immediately. Uh, the probe still alive in the main base, unfortunately, getting some scouting information. But uh, Light will deal with that here in a moment. A good opener so far from Light. What do you expect out of him uh, on kickback? Because it's such a wild map. Ooh, yeah, it is such a wild map. It's honestly very hard to say. I, it's very difficult for Terran players to deal with Protoss on this map. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he tries something a little bit crazy here. We are seeing a, a reasonably quick command center being thrown down like we would, would expect uh, given kickback has so much economic potential for Protoss. You kind of do need to think of a way of either being cheesy or greedy as a Terran in one way or another. And it seems like we're going to be going a little bit more to the greedy side of things. I can't really say I blame him, but uh, I don't know exactly what he's going to be following this up with. Light's very known for going for Vulture Drop, so he might commit to that, or he might know that it's such a likely thing for him to do that there's no way it would work against Bisu here, so he might not do that entirely and go for, like, just some crazy strong two-base, like, five-factory or six-factory push timing. I don't know. Look at that. Skipping the range, getting into a Nexus and a Robo. He's playing kind of greedy with the way that he's opening. Uh, it could pay off, though, because Light is uh, also getting into his natural and not planning to put on any early aggression. There's the range started now. And so Bisu, with the, the closeness uh, of these bases, like the vertical rush distance is not that far. Uh, Bisu might be able to get in right before turrets with a a shuttle and maybe deal a little bit of damage hmm. i think he's he might be able to do that it does look like there's a starport that's going to be on the way so it might be that vulture drop uh oh never mind now now here's the thing here's the thing this map is very good for wraiths so this makes sense this makes a lot of sense and i'm really excited to see this from light we're going to be seeing the, the wraith style and this is something that who knows we might be seeing this more in the meta in the future if players can figure this out a bit more but just so you know guys wraiths are actually pretty good against protoss it's just very situational and like you need to know what you're doing I don't think he's seen that uh, shuttle play is coming, that Reaver's coming, but this is the perfect uh, build to do this against. Um, yeah. If he was going for just tr three gate gl uh, goon with observer, Oops. this yeah. gets smashed. Yeah. Like there's nothing right. that the raids can do aside from you know little bits of probe damage here and there until the gl the goons are all in place, and then once the goons are in the mineral lines, there's nothing you can do. Which is why you see a lot of Protoss players just go for that free gate ob style because it's such a cookie cutter, safest way of playing Protoss. But most Protoss players don't play that style. They want to play either a little bit greedy, a little bit cheesy, or some other kind of variation thereof. So you don't usually see that free gate um, ob style, even though it's the safest way of playing. So maybe this is a, a way you can catch Protoss players off guard if they're not playing too safe and standard. We don't have any wraiths out yet. Okay, there's the two wraiths. But the drop will still get off, I believe, into this uh, natural. One cell it pops out. Oh, he gets the reaver onto the ground. Okay, can he get a big shot? Ooh. All right, two kills. Not bad. Another two kills, I think. And one Five more. Total. Five, six, total. six kills. Wow, okay. That's enough. That's, that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, he loses everything, but six kills. Very, very decent. The Wraiths were supposed to block that completely if uh, Light wanted to be ahead. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Like, there is a world where 
he tries to like unload the shuttle and it lo unloads the zealots first and the, the reaver just barely doesn't get out in time so he was kind of hoping for that but didn't manage to secure unfortunately mm -hmm. um but he will be able to put on a little bit of pressure with these cloaked wraiths though it's a little bit annoying um for these slow observers to catch up to those so they can fly around and do a little bit of a uh, finessing to both keep bisu pinned back and also you know kind of trip him up in his macro cycles a little bit once in a while when he forces him to have to react to these race running around and being annoying one thing that uh i always hear from oh okay okay killing off the the observer was a good move hey he's yep. gonna get a few probes out of this um two so far there's the observer does he have a scan for that he's gonna switch over to this third base no probes are present so can't really do too much with that he scans he sees the observer is gonna back away i was about to say that uh whenever i'm playing yeah. as zerg people always ask me like oh uh, why don't you just build a spore against these wraiths but uh you know <laughs> spores are not nearly as powerful uh, or cheap when it comes to uh air defense as a, a cannon you just throw a cannon down in your mineral line as a protoss player you've got money for that no problem um, right you don't have to sacrifice a probe to do it and you've got way more probes than the zerg player will have in a situation like this so dropping cannons in every mineral mineral line is it's completely necessary and should be uh, the go-to for bisu uh, it won't be long right. before every mineral line is completely defended just purely by static d well he, he will try to avoid that because there's a chance that light doesn't commit into this and he's only going to make like three to five and never make any more and bisu knows that's a possibility so he probably will avoid making cannons but as he sees one or two more race being added on he may start to make those cannons yeah, it's got one in the main one at the third or one at the the natural excuse me the third should have a cannon on the way now fourth base is already up, uh, coming up but light sitting here on kickback this is the reason why he did this uh build on kickback right he can take no. this third base no problem if he was on any other map taking a third would be impossible with the the current position he just doesn't have enough tanks doesn't have enough units to to hold on to that so flying back in he's gonna get about four or five probes not bad at all this is some right. very good damage with these wraiths but really is nice. it going to be enough no i think it is i think this is a really nice amount of damage it's not like like game ending damage or anything but no. this might be enough to like stabilize the game state for light to be much more comfortable and just like you know push into that free factory get his stuff rolling and then put out a much more stronger mid game than he was maybe looking to be having previously like he's not in a great position by any stretch of the word oh he's be careful these rivers does get two shots two two kills with that but now that the shuttle's dead in the water we just need to you know kill this reaver cost efficiently and we're going to be sitting pretty here for light but a little bit lost mining time does uh, hurt him a bit here yeah that slows him down just slightly but not having to build any turrets is another big factor you gotta imagine right. that uh, you know to all that build time on the scvs building the turrets and then being sent back to work uh the money that went into a normal game with a whole bunch of turrets defending against speed shuttles coming in that's I mean, that's something as well. You can't uh, just completely count that out. Uh, on the other right. side, though, that's a lot of gas that was spent into raids, so the tank count's going to be lower. Now he's building the turrets quite a bit later, of course, but he will eventually need some turrets in order to keep this defense. But also, if Light's, like, on top of his rave control, like, the lack of turrets kind of baits you in to, like, maybe making a mistake and then him potentially killing your shuttle for free or something. So it gives mm. him a lot of potential EV as well because you're more likely to, like, be a bit too overly eager knowing that there's no turrets. Right. Two more shuttles flying around the map. I'm surprised to see Beast is still making mass shuttle, uh, even though we have all these wraiths, but I guess it's just strong in basically any situation. Uh, these wraiths are going to reveal themselves by hitting the pylon. I would actually shy away from even killing a pylon like this. It's nice to kill a pylon, but the pylon is paying for itself just by revealing where the wraiths are at. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so. it, it's good. It's it's definitely good that he's at least built the turrets before doing this. But mm. I agree. Like, there's a chance that if the shutter was near near, maybe he could have just gone in for like a storm drop or whatever it would have been. You know what I mean? Like right yeah. at that moment when he knows the wraiths are pinned down and occupied over there, he can storm drop the other base. That's right. Base in the top left hand corner, taking another main is incredibly important on this map. Uh, most of the bases around uh, on these high grounds in in 12, 6, uh, 9, and 3 have limited minerals. They're only 1,200 minerals, if I'm remembering correctly. 1,200 uh, yes, minerals 1200. per patch, which means that they mine out way faster. And so right. they won't have that longevity as a normal base would have on a normal map. And uh, taking another one of these... Uh, you know, 1,500 mineral bases is going to give Bisu that long life that he needs to eventually weather down this Terran player who's sitting on three bases with two of them being just those 1,200 uh, mineral yeah. now, depending bases. On, and depending on how well you saturate those bases, that could be five minutes faster or it could be maybe like six or seven minutes faster if you really oversaturate the bases. It, it, is, it does make a big difference. The wraiths are moving out on the map now. Four of them. If they find these shuttles randomly out on the map, it could be some insane damage. He's actually flying through the middle. He's not cloaked. And so he no. won't be able to, you know, just just run around randomly here and, and potentially find those. Two probes going to go down as they transfer over to the top left. Great snipe on a Templar. Use them like mutas. Picking yeah. off Templar in this army that's moving out, and uh, Bisu, most of his Templar are in uh, shuttles, but uh, some of them have to be on the ground. There's just not enough shuttles to pick everything up, and losing those few Templar is going to be a serious pain. Now, Light has 150 supply. He could move out and try to take a fourth, and I think that's what he's about to do, but Bisu is poised, ready for this move out and could dive upon this and just wipe out this army if he gets the right storms. Well, Light has just finished his EMP, so this is like the golden opportunity for him to engage. If he can get a money EMP on this clump of units, maybe it'll be an easy fight for him. But so far, huge Zealot bombs maybe coming in the back line. Beautiful spread on these tanks, though, making this not very effective. Pretty good storm on the Northern Threshold, makes short work of the tank's position there. And now Bisu goes to work on trying to cleave through the tank line. Zealots are still in a high enough number that the Dragoons can still rain down phase disruption shots. Now, finally, the infantry has been diminished that now the Dragoons will start to fall to the uh, siege tank arc like cannons but honestly like this trade probably went pretty good for light more than the bisu was hoping for but bisu inversely he knows that he's killed so many of bit lights tanks that it's going to be so difficult for light to come out onto the map and challenge him i think light's got to make a move now though he's got to push out and take this yeah. fourth yeah no real quick. choice because Has bisu to is going to macro out another insane army before you know it and he's got gateways over there in the top left as well so he's just got so much production rolling light has mere moments before his bases start to mine out so he has to get this online but there's really no way for him to push across the map and deal any damage to bisu just getting the fourth base will have to be yeah. compensation enough I mean, the stars could be aligning and we could have had like vultures intercepting these probes running across the map and have like a few like glimmers of hope here for light. But I mean, even that wouldn't be enough to necessarily secure a win, but it would be like a little bit of hope here for him. As it stands, it's looking a little bit rough. He's barely got enough supply to not die. But because it's a non-traditional map with only 1,200 in the mineral fields of these natural and uh, third base here, like unfortunately, like these bases are literally about to dry up right here, right now. Like usually they'd be drying up in like four or five minutes minutes time but now they're going to be diminishing at, at this moment when he needs the most i think light's main goal of this game is going to be try to take top bottom left i don't think he's going to have a real opportunity to push um he's slowly getting that supply back up 154 is just barely enough maybe to hold on against the maxed army depending on how uh, bisu engages the tanks are looking very nicely spread out and mm. so it'll be hard for him to get, you know, big storms on the army like uh, Stork got right. on speed or 
uh, anything like that. So uh, let's see how this engagement goes. Ooh, Templars get picked off immediately. That's not a good start to this I don't think Bisu wants attack. to go into there. I don't think Bisu... I think Bisu's like realized, hang on a minute, I just let him take a fourth base here because I can't attack into that. And he's already secured enough of a lane to defend his fourth. So Bisu's going to swing around to the other end of the, the tank line here to see if he can break through that end maybe there's a few mines here but not that many units finally the fluidity of light's army shuffles over to reinforce gunning down some of these shuttles as they're inbound beautiful storms coming up in preemptive dematrix gonna be making it very difficult to break through those initial tank formations but i don't think there's gonna be enough here for um uh light to necessarily win this fight but he, he technically will live and if he can live and hold on to this fourth base he's technically not out of the game yeah it looks like he he should live and a nice little mind connection there to finish off that uh, attack. Bisu falls back. His remax is going to be incredibly fast. He has lots of money in the bank. As long, you know, you said the, oh my gosh, I, I let uh, Light take a fourth base. Uh, that hmm. realization from Bisu. It's not as big of a deal, though, in, right. in this map. Um, it, it is, of course, uh, frustrating, but... We've already mined out the natural. The natural is gone for light. Yeah. His third base is getting low, and his fourth is not going to last long. So he just needs to delay a little bit longer. Don't allow light to get down into the bottom left, though. If he allows light to just get over there because he's busy dealing with these vultures, he's really going to regret that situation. Light's going to get up on high ground and have a bunch of tanks over that natural and then he's going to have half the map and that's a real problem yeah, but this is this is this is this is why i said that that's why it's an oh no situation for bisu mm. because like it's not an oh no right now but it's like a oh no if he does manage to translate this fourth base into a split map position i've literally thrown the game if, if that happens it, it is a very difficult for that to go without a hitch does manage to get a beautiful storm drop coming on this suv train the pullout was just quickly enough that he's not going to lose let's get the shuttle as well so manages to prevent any compensation from bisu uh does take a lot of damage to all those SUVs. so the following storm drop will probably like kill the entire train so any further attempts from bisu might have a big payoff but he needs to come in here and actually accomplish that there are still wraiths out on the field so potentially the shuttle will be denied even getting entry here yeah, it, would be, it would have to be quite a dive for Bisu to get into that back line now. There's so much uh, spread of Terran in front of mm. that base, so uh, I doubt that he's going to be able to dive in there. Bunch of shuttles coming forward. He's going to go right on top of these tanks. The three Goliaths are not able to two-shot, but they're taking out the shuttles pretty quickly. Only a couple of storms get out, and dude, Light is going to hold this with flying colors. Uh, that's this is crazy. why forward happens, yeah. saying. This is exactly why forward happens, saying. This is why I was worried for Bisu, and yeah, he waited for the three-two upgrades to kick in, and thought that would be enough to make the difference. But it doesn't matter because Light's on curve with his own upgrades, three-two for him as well, and he's been trading really exceptionally this entire game and resetting the infantry of Bisu in such a way that Bisu's never been able to have enough to fight him head on, and he's been able to shuffle over his position more and more to the west. Now he's got this base starting to be become a split in the map and this will be a situation that was very winnable for light and it, it, maybe even in a situation where he doesn't even need to attack he just needs to defend maintain game state and split the map in half and just hold what he's got yeah i was looking so dire for light for a moment there uh, as bisu continued to smash army after army but that a final fight or that last fight that we saw was so one-sided it's crazy how much uh it changed uh from the the previous fight to that fight <laughs> it just completely flipped on its head uh one moment it was pretty much even trading and then the next moment it's completely one-sided and light is just dominating and now more shuttles Whoa. coming in trying to deny a base over here but the wraith control is fantastic just gonna pick off these shuttles as they fly in only a couple of zealots popped out and those can be easily dealt with the late game potential of this wraith play is looking fantastic for light 
Yeah, this is really remarkable comeback from like it's exactly the kind of vision I had for him being able to navigate into a win, and he's been able to execute it so far. D Matrix preemptively going down on the front line, soaking up as much fire as possible so the other units can shuffle over and get into position. Some of these other tanks are much more clumped up on the left though, so Storms will have much more cost efficiency, but there's not enough units left in this meat of the Protoss infantry. It's drying up very quickly. The Zealot goons getting absolutely shredded by the tanks, not even in siege mode right now, just attack moving them down and bullying them away from the rally point. Bisu supply dropping dangerously low, actually below uh, where light is at now, and he's starting to, yeah, unsiege and just shove forward. He should definitely be able to deny the center right. Bisu not going to be able to hold on to that for sure. Uh, as light pushes in, just a couple of tanks hitting that base, and they're going to max out at nearly the same time uh, in, in this one. Like, I think Beast is starting to get ahead a little bit, but Light's going to be right behind him. This this is a game that you should show to Terran players to help them understand how Terran actually works. Because Light kind of did a clinic on showing you like most of your micro is done before the fight even like takes place. Having good like spread of tanks can really like make the difference. Like even if you are really in a bad spot, just a few preemptive things can really make enough to get you back into the game. And beautiful drills away from these drops then with good scouting. He's not really taking too much damage. These SCVs might take a lot of damage though. These ones are the bruised from before. They're already low HP. So even just like a few moments under the storm and get, get them killed instantly. So he is doing a lot of damage at the six o'clock base at least. Ooh, more and more damage coming out from the storm potential. And he can't really get his units up here to defend against this efficiently. This might be the best chance that Bisu has. Uh, he yeah. just killed a lot of SCVs. And he's dropped his overall supply dangerously he low. He's low. Because he hasn't, he, he was he was cleaning up these drops efficiently when he had the wraiths, but now that the wraiths aren't a factor anymore, the drops are causing him such a headache because of how hard it is to get his units to flow around the map. He, he really, if anything, should have just remade some wraiths. Yeah, those wraiths were doing such a fantastic job. Now more shuttles coming out. This little army over in the center right is going to be cleared. Light going to set up in preparation for an attack into the natural, but where is Bisu going to go with this army? Tanks are quite stacked up at the moment. He'll have to spread those as the fight is coming in. These tanks are way too stacked up. This is the opportunity that Bisu was looking for. And EMP goes down, but it misses. Holy crap, so many kills on these Templar. Annihilating the tank forces. Look at that supply just plummet as Bisu shoves forward. Oh my goodness. Light this just got so dismantled. A, this is such a great example of like the folly of Terran, man. It really does exemplifies the comeback potential of Terran, but also how quickly things can escalate out of control if your tanks are out of position just one time. Just one time, saying if they're stacked in out of position one time, it's all over. Yeah, that was beautifully done by Bisu as well as a mistake from Light. Light just allowing those tanks to get stacked up as they were moving over to the right i thought he was going to be there in time i thought he had the the moments uh, as the army was being cleaned out in the center right i thought he had time to spread everything but it seems like he didn't he had yeah. everything way too stacked and he allowed it all to siege up light is getting completely overwhelmed now it doesn't really matter that he has bottom left because this army is in between the rallies and bottom left and Eventually, as more shuttles come in, he'll be able to bomb up onto that high ground. Look at the supply differential. A hundred. No, no, it's crazy. It's more than double. It's absolutely insane. It's literally 250% more. It's absolutely wild stuff. Uh, I, I, it's, it literally all stems from just having to like deal with that clumsy cleanup on those shuttles and storm drops. Like he just, without the race, he just really struggled to, to get that sorted out. And then by the time he finally did sort it out, the units had a, such a long journey getting back into position that he just got completely caught with his pants down. Beast is going to try to break into the bottom left. It's a last desperate stand for light. He's getting everything up onto high grounds. He's trying to put his forces into a position where they can trade effectively against all of this coming in, but drops are going to be laid down. This is exactly what I was saying as the shuttles come forward. 
Uh, he'll be ready to break the bottom left, and there's nothing that Light can do. All of his rallies are coming out of bottom right, and they're being completely crushed by the rallies of Bisu. He can't hit that critical mass to take a reasonable fight anymore. And this is it, Shun. We're going to have a well, I mean, this victory. Is, Such a back this and forth. This crazy, crazy tug of war we've had this week, saying. Like, the entire time, just back and forth, all the way to one champion left remaining for all three races. And then we finally have Light versus Bisu in the finale. And it looks like Light's going to die. And he somehow manages to secure a fourth and turn it into a base split, map split situation where he's looking like he might actually win. And then Bisu still ends up winning. Like, oh, fuck. It's crazy. The script writers always work working overtime for KCM, I'll tell you. Crazy back and forth. I, I genuinely was sure that Bisu was going to win, and then I was completely sure that Light was going like, to win. Well, yeah, yeah, right, right? <laughs> oh, How crazy man. was that? What a twist. M. Night Shyamalan couldn't have done it better. Guys, we're going to jump to our score screen. Crazy, crazy final match. Whoa. Taking a look at the point rankings... The kind of low chance, the low probability outcome that we were talking about last week has started to happen. Protoss got a win with uh, Zerg uh, getting yeah. last place. So uh, on the upward trajectory, it's possible if everything happens the same at, again um, right. in next week, we could have a tie. We've never had a tie before. I'm very curious to see what that would be like but i'm afraid i'm afraid to even talk about it because every time i talk about it, it never happens <laughs> yeah we did that before we gotta not do that if it happens it happens we gotta yeah. be very zen about it whatever will be will be <laughs> but yeah terran gonna be definitely relegated to having to wait for that semi-finals but yeah everything to play for with protoss still if they can get this win and somehow zerg still takes the, the bottom place again and I don't know, man. This could be crazy. We could have some crazy situation on our hands. I have no idea what will be planned for the tiebreaker situation. We'll have to wait and see if that does transpire. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just super stoked for KCM in general. Like, It's always been a pleasure to, to both watch and cast these games. You never know quite what's going to happen in this event. Yeah, it's been so much fun this season. Uh, looking forward to a great semifinal and final. Likely it'll be that PVT semifinals, but mm. Zerg will be waiting for the finals pretty epic stuff uh, definitely Zerg has been absolutely crushing it lately not only in KCM but in SSL as well uh, they have been showing up with some of course just just looking at Soul Key alone is is crazy this guy is so freaking good Oh, he's a machine. No, he's like, it's unreal how good Soul Key is. And I think that's why he's so special, because he's confident playing from behind. And most people shouldn't be like that. Like, most people should be, like, a little bit uncomfortable playing like that. But he just, he's like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm happy to play like that. And he just kind of, like, looks at the game differently. You know what I mean? Like, he's almost got, like, he's got different, different wiring going on neurologically, where his brain is not quite calibrated like ours, and he just sees things a little bit differently. And he's so creative with his play as well. Like he's he's got a bit of that shine in him as well. Uh, he's so powerful when it comes to macro, like a hero or an action. But mm. then at the same time, he has the game plans. Like he's got the the game knowledge and the understanding of a shine. It's yeah. it's all yeah. coming together for him. He's doing so fantastic. His flash level Zerg. Uh, all we need is a flash level Protoss and we will be in a, a real golden era of Brood War. It's just going to be like the old days, like Flash Jade on Bisu <laughs> in, you know, Kespa era. It's crazy. And, and that's no, like, like um, embellishment either. Like, Flash is literally probably going to be trying to qualify and most likely will be able to at least get into the round of 24, maybe round of 16 in the next tournament as well. I doubt he'll be winning the thing. I doubt he'll be getting a high-ranking finish, but I imagine he will be good enough to get through the qualifiers and probably get through one or two stages. I pray to the gods that KCM and F Flash can figure out their differences and talk things out. Get him into this tournament as well. That would <laughs> that be I don't amazing. see happening. That won't happen. That won't happen. That won't happen. At least not for years. Like maybe two, three years, but I don't even see that happening. No, I don't think so. Well, so I, I pray that you're wrong. Anyways, I guys. Be wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. 
Uh, let us know which games you enjoyed the most. Leave a comment. Even if it's just a GG, it helps out with the algorithm. That's it. See you next week. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys.